now for the shop report with What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop J. I'll be your host for the day. Here's what's happening. We only got a few things on the menu today, but first, if you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us a shout, that number to call is area code 267-687-0026. Once again, that number to call is area code 267-687-0026. The items on the menu for the day are the Major League Baseball postseason push. We're going to take a look at some of the action that's been going on here lately and see which team or teams will meet up in this year's World Series. NFL Week 5. We continue with our notable or most notable team performances. But first, I'd like to go over this letter that was written to Penn State. I don't know his position, but football player Jonathan Sutherland in regards to his hair, a.k.a. or I.E. or in particular, his dreadlocks. Joining me on the show today are none other than my cap from the NYC, a.k.a. Rucker Park, and just recently found out information on Ohio State's number one booster, Brother Rich. Brother Rich, what's happening? <laughs> well, my dear brother, my friend, uh, I, I'll take that insult and keep sliding on. That was not an insult. Man, no less, but I'm always honored to be on this program uh-huh. uh, with you and all our wonderful fine hosts, my brother, and all our, certainly all the listeners. I'm always honored to be on here. Yes, indeed. And then on the other side of the ledger, my cat from up north, Purdue alumni, Michigan State fan, always wearing a Michigan jersey, and of course, last but not least, Ohio State athletic director in training, Joey James, aka Double J. Tell the people what you say. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to recover from that one. I, but I, I, you know what? Where's the mute button for the host? Huh? Uh, there is. It's one on my side. <laughs> I, w- I will not be hitting it. I won't. And then, last but not least. We have yet another one of my sports colleagues that I work with, my cat, Leon, and the L stands for don't mess with him. <laughs> Y'all better leave that man alone. Fellas, what's going on? What's up, Lee? What's up, brother? How y'all doing today? I'm excited to be on this show. Double, uh, James, you're too kind, man, but uh, I'm used to your rhetoric, so let's get it in. Yeah, it's all good. All right, fellas, let's dive into some of this action. Like I said earlier, First thing I want to discuss today, of course, is, well, I want to ask everybody here on the panel. Leon, I'll start with you, of course. Did you see the letter that was written by, I'm presuming it was a booster, a Penn State booster that was written and sent to uh, Donald Sutherland, Jonathan Sutherland, excuse me, the Penn State player about his dreadlocks? Uh, no, I'm unaware about this in lightning. Okay, I will do here shortly. Brother Rich, what about you? Absolutely, I did. Okay, Double J, you? i unfortunately seen it as well. Okay. Uh, Brother Rich, we'll start with you while I pull this up here. Um, what say you about this letter? And, and not so much about the letter, but in, in regards to the hair, but why is this such an issue with, with people? You know, how players' hair, I, I, I don't, I mean, I didn't... I, He's not the only person I've ever seen with dreadlocks. Why is this such an issue in your estimation? Well, I actually, I, I went and read the letter from the, from the uh, as he calls himself, a booster, an alumni. And he laments the fact that athletes today are not as well cut, clean, as, as, as clean cut, pardon me, and well groomed as they were in the 50s and 60s, as he says. And he talked about having attended the uh, the game with his wife and them feeling uh, somewhat displaced. And we have to be real with this. You know, in Trump's America, you have a segment of the population that laments the America that they believe has gone by the wayside. And with that, they believe there's a certain representation of that America that they want to see again. And unfortunately, sadly, the the parts of that America that they want to see don't have a place for representation that's free spirited, that is uh, expressive in a way outside of white Christian values. And so, of course, you have a university, an old time university like Penn State, 
dealing with old alumni, looking at young players coming now who don't look like them. And they are intimidated, they are insecure, and there is too much of the old-fashioned, good old boy uh, behavior that continues to pervade the college uh, football in particular, but college sports landscape in general. So long story short, nobody should be surprised by this. Coming from a booster from Penn, uh, University like Penn State, only of these big programs. Yeah. And you know, uh, Double J um, and uh, Leon, before y'all weigh in, just let me read read this letter so you all maybe can add a little bit of extra to your thoughts when you respond to this. And then to, to you too again, Brother Richard, as well. Dear Jonathan, well, at the top of the letter it says, we are Penn State proud with about 35 exclamation marks. I thought that was interesting. If you're a literary kind of person, you'll understand why. But anyway, the letter goes, Dear Jonathan, my, yeah, you caught that right, Brother Rich. My wife and I are proud mm-hmm. older yep. graduates of Penn State. Right. We follow all Penn State sports, football, wrestling, volleyball, gymnastics, basketball. We love it all. I played all the sports in my younger days, still played full-court basketball well into my 50s, Love the competition, but never had the size or the talent to reach your level, though the desire was there. Though the athletes of today are certainly superior to those in my days, we miss the clean-cut young men and women from those days. Watching the Idaho game on TV, my wife and I, we couldn't help but notice your, well, awful hair. Surely there must be mirrors in the locker room, exclamation mark. Don't you have parents mm. or girlfriend who told you those shoulder-length dreadlocks look disgusting and are certainly not attractive? We congratulate you on your game against Pitt, but you need to remember you represent all Penn Staters, both current and those alumni from years past. We would welcome the reappearance of dress codes for athletes. You will certainly be playing on Sunday in the future, but we have stopped watching the NFL due to the disgusting tattoos, awful hair, and immature antics in the end zone. Players should act as though they've been there before. For the glory, he ends it with, Dave Peterson, I guess, is his name. Double J, what'd you say? Well, I think this is about as blatantly racist as it gets. Um, You can, it's not difficult to read in between the lines here. Um, It's disturbing that in 2019 that people have no problem, uh, you know, going on record as, Dave Peterson just did and you know if you if you think of what his ideal image is you all you got to do is just google a a 1950s athlete at a a big 10 university as an example and and you'll get an idea of of what he deems desirable Mm -hmm. which implies that not only this young man so many others are deemed undesirable mm. and that that really draw, uh, I have an issue with this and, and put kind of my foot down is that, okay, you're, you want to support the program that you're an alumni with, which means you should be in solidarity that every race creed that on that uniform has, mm. um, because, but instead, you only want to support them. And I've heard this not just with Penn State, but I've heard this, in, especially in the SEC, that there the these folks that fit that image. And again, I'm going to point out the image of uh, of, of the undesirable. They get a pass because of the uniform mm. that otherwise they wouldn't have gotten. Mm, okay. And as you're seeing now, now, now that's not even necessarily being good enough in, in circumstances such as this, which is just outright disturbing and disgusting. Mm, interesting, interesting. Um, Lee, before you, before you weigh in, I'm curious to know, maybe I'm out of line here. Maybe I'm not. And maybe this don't fit, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And then, Leon, if you agree or disagree, please, in your response, let me know. I don't have a problem with it. But... You're writing this letter to a guy about his hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we all know 
what happened with the Penn State program a few years back. I'm trying to fear, figure out where was this mm -hmm. outcry when it came to what Jerry Sandusky did within the from the alumni of Penn State. There was outcry what Sandusky did, you know, from the public. But where was this letter at? Where was this type of letter at when Sandusky did what he did? Go ahead, Lee. I'm way in. And does that fit in all of this? Am I right to ask that, or what? What would you say here? Go ahead, Lee. Uh, you're very right to ask that question. I mean, I, and I agree with Double J and Brother Rich both. I mean, it's so blatantly racist that it's laughable. Mm. Like, the outcry, the outcry comes from you not doing what I tell you to do or you not fitting the mold of what I say you should be. Mm. And, and Double J referenced the movies, referenced the, the 1950s. All you got to do is look at Pleasantville. That's what he wants to, you to see. He wants oh, to see good Pleasantville. One. Good he wants one. to see clean-cut guys. Yes, sir. No, sir. But even though the, the kid might be that kind of way, but he doesn't look the way I feel he should look. So it's a problem because it makes me uncomfortable because it, it speaks to my inferiority. Mm, so that's basically what it be, what it breaks down to. So in other it, words, it speaks to my inferiority that I, that I have in myself. And in regard to the Sandusky thing, of course. Now I guarantee you, if, if no no pun intended, if Sandusky been a black guy, they would be they would have been way more vocal. But by him part, being part of that good old boy network, as they are, you know, it's that don't ask, don't tell stuff. Mm. The only reason why they, they they had to speak on it was because the public outcry became so crazy that they couldn't keep, keep quiet no more. So it, it was a double standard um, in regards to how they viewed the different standards. So the same BS, but they view in different ways instead of the color of the skin. Yeah, different strokes, different folks. Yeah, I'm just curious to know. Um... Pretty much. Yeah, this is this is just mind boggling to me because whatever happened to don't judge a book by its cover. Right? This guy, based right. on appearance from what this guy saw and just felt that from what he saw he should have penned this letter. But you don't know the man. Even being a booster or no. whatever, you don't know this man and his man's background. What he looks like. Now I get it. I get okay. it. Perception is the reality for many in this country. But we have to get away from the perception being a reality. You know, Brother Rich, Double J, yeah. Leon, you all have heard me say on more than one occasion, you all have heard me say on more than one occasion, it's not necessarily the manifest. I hear some noise in the background. I need whoever's some scraping type noise. Okay, appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> there's a manifest aspect, that which you see up front or outwardly or aesthetically, and then there's a latent, that which is underneath. Why, if we are intelligent individuals and common sense, well, I guess if, if the world comprehended on the same level, all sense would be common. I guess not. But if people have any wherewithal, then you would understand you don't make a complete assessment of based off what somebody looks like without trying to get more in-depth to who they are and where they're coming from before you say, oh, okay. So in other words, I can't say, oh, man, I don't like that dude because I look. I get to know this cat lightweight. And I say, oh, okay, yeah, he, this dude is an a-hole because dot, dot, dot. Am I wrong in that assessment? Anybody, please help me out. If I am, point it out. Please, you're, you're 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 absolutely not wrong, but I think what you're missing <clears throat> here is this, Jay. I think that what's missing here is the assumption that any of us would make that this is based on that young man's hairstyle. This has nothing to do with that exactly young man's right. This, right. on the face of it, is a is an affront to humanity. This is a straight up violation of this individual's humanity because what he's saying is. He, remember now, he confesses in his letter that I don't even watch Sunday football because <laughs> exactly. now everybody in Sunday football doesn't have dreadlocks, <laughs> but he he doesn't like tattoos, he doesn't like celebrations, right. they don't like. So what they're telling you is that Sunday football has become too black. I don't like that black stuff, and I and you are black, and now you all are brought this black stuff to my beloved college football, and as an alumni. I take it upon myself as a as an alumni. Somebody he probably he, the man put his name on a letter, so he's probably a big booster. He, they probably have enough money that they got season tickets. They do this. They're involved and engaged to to the point where he doesn't mind speaking his mind. So, but but let me say this too. I think that we also have to acknowledge this is this is where sports and the society that we live in cannot be divided from one another. We have to be honest. The president says of NFL players, he calls them SOBs. So it's not it's not mm -hmm. a far stretch for somebody living in Pennsylvania, upstate Pennsylvania, 
rural Pennsylvania in a in a, in a more um, in a less than urban area, if you will. I'll leave it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, area of Pennsylvania where they may not even be interacting with people of different cultures, diverse cultures every day. And so you you got point. somebody who feels who is emboldened to say. I don't like that. Let me write you a letter and tell you why I don't like that. And really, he's saying, why don't you shape up? Why don't you clean up? I don't, I don't like this behavior, and I'm strong enough to put my name to this and tell you to your face. As a matter of fact, in, a, in the today's world where things go, quote, unquote, viral like this went viral, you got to be really bold to put your whole name and send it over the Internet. And that, that. Mm-hmm. This man is telling you straight up that he's, I'm speaking not only for myself, I'm speaking for other members of the alumni that don't like this. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's where I want to point yeah. out that there's no <laughs> way he felt alone on this topic where he was compelled enough to write the letter. Again, if you feel that you're on an island about a, a particular thought, chances are you're not going to – you're going to keep those thoughts to yourself. But, again, if you're sitting in, you know, in that, that press box, or just in the suite with your fellow alums from the quote unquote glory days. And you say, you know, this guy is a great player. However, I don't like blank, blank and blank. Chances are somebody co-signs that. Mm. He said, you know what? I'm I'm going to take the next step with this. Additionally, let's look at it from the, the aspect of the player. You stood up wearing that same uniform that this, individual war at some point in time do you do you feel compelled enough that you want to keep suiting up for that interesting myself personally if if i was personally attacked like that i would demand to play elsewhere Mm. and have immediate eligibility Mm. lee before you weigh in i just want to say too um for the folks out there listening you know, I've had a few people come up to me now and again and say, yeah, your topics are a little too scathing, a little bit too radical, you know, a little too edgy. I say, look, at the end of the day, uh, I'm here to tell the truth. I know no offense to nobody. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to offend. We're here to enlighten. I want us all to come away from this show every day, all the time, every time saying, you know what, let me go and look, let me go and look that up. You know, be motivated to be better, you know, in your literary, in your thought process, the whole nine. But we're going to tell the truth here. OK. And again, no offense, but the truth does hurt, you know, and some of y'all just can't handle the truth. You can't run away from this stuff every day, all day. All right. If, any, if we're living in a day and age of acceptance. OK, there's a lot of things that's being pushed forth and pushed upon us as a society that I don't agree with. But if I say that which I prefer, you understand, what I'm trying to tell you what you your preference is going is going to take precedent over mine, so to speak. No, it's not. It's not if we not. If we all this is America. OK, and I got right. So, again, I don't mean to, we're not here to <laughs> offend anybody. We're not. But um, I found this is an interesting subject. I thought it should be discussed and I thought it should be discussed amongst my colleagues who are more than apt and educated and intelligent enough to do so. So, Leon, go ahead and have the last say before we move on to uh, some of this MLB action. <clears throat> I mean, I, I second everything you said and, and what the brother said in the panel as well. I mean, and Double J brought up a good point. It's like, for him to have the familiarity to, to even write that letter, he's definitely talking about the people of his, of his same ilk, of his same mm-hmm. time. Yeah. He just had the, the, enough, the enough gumption to say something. Gotcha. And put, his, and put his name on it. But that's being said. And as an athlete, it would make me feel like, after hearing something like that, like, basically, what you want me to do is, is excuse my language, set up Negro Entertainment. Mm. Entertain your job to entertain me. And I ain't say I don't care about nothing else. Nothing, nothing what you represent. Nothing about who you are. All I care about is the blue and white letters, and you doing what I say you should do. Mm. And the fact that, that I feel you don't, even though I don't know you personally, I probably never sat down with you. I probably never interacted with anybody like you. But my prejudice of not being around, I think Brother Rich said this too, that if they're not being around people like that, they have a, a certain a certain ideology of how a person should be or, or, or act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll give you a prime example. Years ago when I served in the United States Navy, I've never been around white people before outside of a coach, lawyers, or cops, or teachers. And when I first got to boot camp, 
it was a melting pot, black, Asian, Mexican, Filipino, you name it. It was a melting pot full of people. But if I be and me never been around those people, I only thought about what I saw on TV or what I interacted with. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I sat down and actually got around those people and seeing what they were cut from, the cloth they were cut from, made me say, oh, we might come a different background, but mm-hmm. somebody about this dude I vibe with. You say poor is poor. Poor. We might come a different back. You say, you say poor is poor, huh? <laughs> if you come from a poor. Poor is poor, rich is rich. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, exactly. So it was like, and and maybe he has been around, he has been in those circumstances where he hasn't been around black people. Only black people he probably been around have been butlers, have been, you know, mm-hmm. people who, who who he looked at as, as less than. And the fact that somebody has enough gumption to, to be expressive and where they and where, where they hear the way they want to be it and carry themselves the way they want to carry themselves, and they don't fit into my cookie cutter image, that's a problem. So mm-hmm. it's not it's it's a uh, it's indicative of of, of what we are in society now, people are now racism still exists. It's just it's just done in different ways. Indeed, done a different way. All right, the number to call if you're out there, out and around, you want to give us a shout. Up and about, and out and around, want to give us a shout. Y'all got to forgive me. I had a little fender bender. That's what I'm calling it. Just a couple of days ago, so I'm not all the way there. The number to call is area code two six seven six eight seven zero zero two six. The number again, area code two six seven six eight seven zero zero two six. Good stuff on the first one, guys. Moving on to some major league baseball Sounds post. Like the Cowboys. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You can't. We're not even t- twenty five <laughs> minutes in, man. Could you? Could you wait? I don't mind. I don't mind you saying it. Could you wait? You know what I'm saying? We do have time constraints. Uh, <laughs> Major League Baseball postseason push. Uh, let's talk about the Cardinals and the Braves first off. Double J, we're gonna hit you with this one. I'm actually, it's hard for me to say who I'm pulling for in this one. The Braves, Braves to me seem to have all of the talent, you know, up and down that roster. They just got, especially Acuna. He's he's something else. But his effort is to be questioned, and you can't do that in big games. Then the Cardinals on the other side, you know, they only, what, second to the Yankees in World Series wins. Now, the Yankees got, what, $325 million, it seemed like. Uh, but the Cardinals got 11. They just know, <laughs> yeah, right? They just know how to win. But here's the most interesting thing I think about the Cardinals. Not necessarily, and this is not necessarily saying that this will be the case in this series, but it is tied to two, you know. Um, for them to be a small market team, they, to me, really do put a dent in that small market can't win. All right, because I don't know how smaller a market St. Louis is than Cleveland or any other Midwest. Why they call it the Midwest, I have no idea. But Midwest City, these dudes got 11 chips, man. And it's something about these cats, man. They just always seem, they don't rebuild. They they just reload. They always seem to be in the conversation. So, Double J, I mean, do the Cardinals win this thing tonight? Are you surprised at the Braves not having already won and it only being 2-2? I know that was a lot for you right there, so take one at a time. And make sure you got your teething ring. You got your teething yeah, ring? Well, okay, good. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, you know, to cover you know, the first point here, St. Louis is actually a very good, uh, a a very good business model of how to really operate a successful, as you pointed out, quote unquote, small market. Because if you look at what a good front office can do, as you stated, they don't rebuild, they reload. You're talking about a team that has players that were in the 2006 world series and again we're in 2019 so you know that is purely off of the fact that you know you you have good scouts everything top to bottom Uh, i i also will say this when it comes to st louis and baseball i encourage everyone to head out to bush stadium at least once in their lifetime ballpark village uh, it's something that I personally I would love to see in other markets. I think what they've done there yeah, is, I would is too. really incredible to see. You know what? Um, WJ, hold that thought. They're, they're big for, with Hold that fans. thought. Hold mm-hmm. that thought. You know, I'm going to fish back off of what you just said. There's one thing about baseball, and I found this with the Indians as well, and I've been to a few parks. 
the experience at a game for baseball is a lot more than just the game itself and however long it takes to play. I know it's been a big issue about mm-hmm. the game takes a long. But you can go to a baseball stadium and have an experience, man, and it's like Disneyland almost. I know that might be stretching it, but you all get the idea. Yeah. So um, I'm with you, too. They, that experience needs to be in every Major League Baseball park across the country because you can really actually go to a baseball game and really come away and be like, man, you felt like you got the most bang for your buck. I can't say so much about basketball and football, but go ahead, finish your thought. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and just to point out, you know, if you look at how Cleveland and Detroit stadiums are, uh, where they're, they're essentially, you know, uh, bumping elbows with one another. Um, so it gives you kind of that entertainment vibe. And if specifically to Comerica Park, they have a merry-go-round for kids. They have a Ferris wheel in there. So again, they understand that, look, to, they, you have to be uh, and to, you know, at this stage of the game, because attendance numbers continue to, to go down, you have to do more than just have a product on the field. Um, to And so as far as what St. Louis has done, I think that by and large, them pioneering some of these extra things, in addition to putting a quality product on the field uh, year in and year out, has no doubt uh, helped you know, have the Cardinals be the pride and joy of, uh, you know, dare I say, the spirit of St. Louis at this point. Ah, um, but regarding it, nice play on you words. Remember, this is, yeah, you found that. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Yeah. Um, so regarding the Braves, you know, ironically, Chipper Jones in game one caught a foul ball. And unfortunately, the Braves have not won a series since he was on the roster when it comes to the playoffs. Mm. Damn. And so there's a lot of angst and just a, a lot of anxiety overall from the fan base. If mm. you were to, to get a pulse of how they're feeling, because as you stated, you got a uh, Ronald Acuna you, uh, who to your, to your point about his, where he's at mentally, it's actually where he's at physically because he's coming off of an injury. They have the pitching staff to do it. However, you feel like if they can just make it over this first hill, they'll ultimately be able to climb a mountain. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And be a very tough out. Yeah. Yeah. It, so I, it'll be very interesting to see. But these two guys, this is da- this is not David and Goliath by any means. This is, you know, uh, a very, very tight and competitive t- uh, series and in evenly matched teams despite their – their vast disparities, they match up very, very well against one another, and you've been able to see that. It's actually been great baseball to watch. Yes, it has. I won't lie about that either. Leon, I'm going to ask you the same two teams, but I'm going to ask you a different question. Based on their experience, do the Cardinals win this series or do the Braves' young talent win it? Uh, I mean, with the pedigree, you got to go with St. Louis. Like you say, eleven championships. Yeah. In, in recent history, I mean, they've been they've been a pedigree. I mean, for especially for a small market team, what they consider a small market team. But Atlanta's coming, man. They 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 giving St. Louis everything they can handle right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I and, they ain't, and they and they ain't, and most importantly, and most importantly, and reason we go to the, go to the NFL uh, we talk about later on is that they they're not scared. They're not scared, and and they're willing to put it all on the line. They're not they're not trying they're not getting manhandled. They are here trying to trying to play. So we got game. We got an attitude like that. Anything can happen, man. Now I'm with you on that, brother Rich. I'm gonna say the same two teams, of course, but I'm gonna ask you a different question as well. Sort of similar, but the Cardinals' experience. Let's say they make it all the way through to the World Series. No matter who it is from the AL side, are they a lock to win it? I would say no. Depends mm. on who they face. Who they face, but okay. I, I would agree with everyone else that, that all the commentary thus far, in particular, the the, the uh, uh, Leon used the language pedigree. You see, this yeah. is the franchise that all of us who have any respect for the sport have to, we have to respect that this franchise has some, some they've found some ingredient that says their uh, organization knows how to set up a farm system whereas you said to us at the beginning of this as you gave us the subject matter you talked about they do not 
uh, you, I think you use the language that they reload. They don't reload or they just continue yeah. to go or something like that. Yeah. And so that, yeah, and that's what it is. They, they don't have to, they don't have to go out and look. They got it. They just reload. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Cause they're always in it. So anytime they're involved, they're always in it. However, it depends on who they face on the other side of the ledger, man. And we got to look at who comes, who comes across that, uh, who, 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 cause that's going to be a fight on the other side and, and whoever comes over is ready to do it. Oh. Yeah, it's not going to be a cakewalk either either side. Okay, I kind of think I know where you're going with that one. Uh, up next, the Nationals at the Dodgers. Brother Rich, we'll stay back with I, you. We, yeah, we're going to stick with you on this one. Yeah, seeing how you out in sunny San Diego, L.A., whatever the case may be, it ain't cold. Anywho, uh, what's up with your boy? Car- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it ain't cold, right? Uh, what's up with your boy Kershaw? Kershina. Mm. Kershwanski. <laughs> other, and I don't know. In other words, not getting it done. Well, well, <laughs> well, you know, we don't we don't worry about Kershaw at this time of year. We worry about him when it comes to when it gets a little colder on your side of the world, uh-huh, because gotcha. it's the World Series when he doesn't when he has yet to uh, last last year. He came through. But this is where we are concerned. Now, I, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the Dodgers are as good as we were last year. I've been the last several years. Thank you. And, and, and you know what? Let's say it for the record. I'm a Dodgers <laughs> fan. I just do not see the same kind of team. I don't see the same kind of speed, cohesion. We, I don't see the team like that. Kenley Jansen has disappeared for the most part in terms of what he's supposed to bring to us. So I don't see – I just do not – if we were the Dodgers of last year – this series is over with the Nationals, but they, we're in the series with them because the Nationals are here, uh, and so I, I, I sadly wouldn't be surprised if they upset us. Mm. What? I'm so glad the show is being recorded. I can't believe Brother Richard said he said he a Dodgers fan, but he was going to well, tell you want it. me to keep it real or not? I mean, no, like, yeah, I want you to you keep just it. Admit that you a Cowboys fan. So I will never admit that. Know, I mean, lies, I mean, lies. I'll tell you lies. Anywho. <laughs> We're not coming back to you for five, five minutes. I'm telling you. Keep it up here. Keep it up. The mute button is ready and ready to rock, rock and roll, baby. Leon, I'm coming to you on this one. Of course, the same two teams. Are you surprised that the Nationals got this thing where it is with the Dodgers? With no Bryce Harper? Uh, no, no, not, not really. Because they have good pitching and they have a good staff. I mean, like this ain't like 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 Brother Rich said. This Dallas team don't look as dangerous as last year's team look. They look vulnerable at times. And you and I both know when you get in the postseason, if, if your team gets in the right groove, it's about the groove you get into. If you get into a good groove, you could knock out anybody. So I'm not shocked that uh if they're making the series with the with the Dodgers, but it goes back to the, they don't they're not reading the press clippings. They're not saying. You know, or was the Dodgers report this fold to them? They're like, no, nah, let's go at them. Yeah, and I'm... that's the competitive thing about sports, but that you gotta love. But like, that's when the playoffs come, man. It separates the man from the boys. Yeah, you know, double and J- mindset. Yeah, and your sh- mindset for sure. Uh, and that's why, as a team, I would I would love for most teams to employ. Speaking of mindset, one mindset hashtag one mindset. That is double J. Before you say anything, before I get you on this one, um. From what I saw, I I just come away with the Nets. They are employing what I like to call the every man play strategy. <laughs> we plan to win, you know what I mean. And they get down to the they right. look if the, if the I forget who the manager is over there, but if they look in the dugout and, and they didn't see they didn't use up most of their players, they're gonna go in the stands and get that old lady wearing the Nets jersey number one on the back. Come on out here, Grandma. We need a double from you, baby. Go get us a double. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, go ahead, Double J. You know, Nationals, Dodgers. Do the Nationals win this without Bryce Harper? And if they do, then what? Dun, 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 dun. Well, I'm going to answer with saying, yes, they can win this. Here's the thing. Both teams have gotten guys on base. This has been a tale of two di- very different uh, it, teams and series in comparison to what we just discussed with Atlanta and St. Louis. You're talking about the the Dodgers leaving 15 people on base, which again that's a big mm. deal. But here's the, here's the caveat: is that the Nationals the have also left 14 on base. Now, oh, uh, prior leading coming into Game Four, 
you were wondering, is Anthony Rendon going to show up at all in this series? And what about Ryan Zimmerman? And both showed up, obviously, in a huge way for game four. I'm going to say the Nationals win this game. I'm going to go out on a limb and say on the road they're going to win the game because of Strasburg's ability to keep people off of the base as he did in game Back. one. And that mm-hmm. is going to likely be the biggest influencer on game five. Okay. I'm so glad somebody said it. This is what, if you all haven't noticed, it's kind of like a pattern when I ask the questions about particular topics because I was hope, I'm hoping without tipping y'all off, somebody give me a response that will help segue or lead me into the thing I wanted to say next. Got me? So I'm glad you said that because I'm asking you all, all three of you all today, <clears throat> it's one or the other. With what Double J just said, Strasburg, because it seems to me like if he was a betting man, he'd put most of his money down on Strasburg tonight. Would the Nats over the Dodgers be an upset, quote unquote, or typical LA flame out, Brother Rich? Upset or flame out? I, I I'm, I'm flame out. <laughs> he said, "Brother Rich, you can, <laughs> that's a first for you. You know, you be spitting. You like, man, what, what's already understood? That need not even really be asked, right? Okay, got you. Double J, an upset right. would it be the Nets over Dodgers or a typical LA flame out? I'm gonna double down on this flame out. Yeah, so you are a betting man. And then Leon, we're gonna come to you. The last but not least, of course, is this? Would that be an upset or a typical LA flame out?" I'll be a flame out. Yeah, I kind of, be a flame out. I kind of think so too, because you know, no. the, you know, you know, you know who was. I mean, cut you off. You know who watched and kind of remind me of. It, it kind of remind me of that of that 2016 Indians team with uh, when they went to the World Series and lost to the Cubs. Okay, got you. Okay, because because Double J because uh Double J said something, or I think one of y'all said something where you said uh, it don't matter who they put in. Whatever they putting in, they coming in doing something. Yeah, that was me. They doing sort of something. Kinda, they, yeah. they're getting a hit, a timely <laughs> hit, a timely steal, a, yeah. a timely strikeout. Yeah. And I'm watching. I was when I was watching that team. That's what jumped out at me. I was like, that's why I said the no fear thing because even like the 2016, I think it was the Yankees they beat or somebody they beat that they weren't supposed to beat. And when they beat them, it it was because whoever Francona put in, they were ready to go. Whatever situation it came, Francona had an answer for it. He had a counter for it. And that's kind of what Watson reminds me of now, where they're playing this year. Yeah. That whatever whatever the Dodgers way. are doing. Hold that thought. That was you, Double J. Hold that thought. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Finish your thought, Leon. Then I'll right, go ahead. He go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, What'd you say? I mean, I was thinking. That was probably it. Yeah, go ahead, Double J. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to point out that actually you're seeing – the same thing, but with the opposite result from the Dodgers. The Dodgers used every right. one of their relievers in game four, mm-hmm. and all of them got hit. Nobody could get anyone out. <laughs> no, right? Right. That's what I'm tripping on, too. Uh, good stuff, fellas. Okay, in the AL, American League, I should have said we were just starting with the National League, of course, but that's my bad. We move on over to the American League or the ALDS. Well, I don't even know we got to the ALDS yet. But anyway, the American League postseason push. The Twins at the Yankees. Let me start off by saying, I wish the Minnesota Twins would have just gone ahead and let the Indians get get that spot. Really, y'all did all that battling with the Indians all season long to get up to get over there and do that. Man, I saw a bases loaded situation, man. And when I say dude fanned, he looked good swinging though. Struck out, he looked good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He looked good, just like old dude did, and I'm going to get you, sucker, when he came out after being locked up for 40 years, came out with them fishbowl bottom stacks on. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, y'all could have let the Indians get that one. Brother Rich, you know, I know you the Yankees man, Yankees fan. But to me, and I, I'm just asking, do you agree or not? The Yankees look like they like way relieved that they, that they faced off against the Twins and not the Indians because this one was over quick. Oh, without a – no, without a doubt, absolutely without a doubt. Definitely make the road to you know. Right, as, while the league is in the back room, getting the ring size up, putting their names on it, you know, putting our diamonds in. Oh, it just stop makes the journey it! Easier. Oh, absolutely. cut it out! Y'all got some big bats over there, but the pitching is suspect. 
I know my singing is terrible, but anyway, <laughs> y'all get the idea. Uh, Leon, the Indians, excuse me, the Yankees are the Yankees, but this is the 2019 version of the Yankees. Is it that these are the Yankees that beat the Twins? Or are these the Yankees that can win all of it this year? Uh, mm, that's a good question. Right now, I think it's too. I mean, the Twins has folded. I don't know why they were gonna even play. <laughs> they said they should have gave it to the Indians. I mean, <laughs> that was that was they terrible. Were, they were ju- they were judged. Excuse me. Oh, you know, pretty much, literally, oh. literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh. the Yankees, the Yankees are dangerous because of their bats. I mean, they they, they will clobber the, the, the mess out of you, but they're pitching the suspect though. Now it all depends on matchup as well. I mean, it depends on who they run against, and they ain't gonna be. It's not it's not a cakewalk by any means, but they it lined up right for them to, to get Minnesota first. Kind of built their confidence up a little bit more, but. Mm-hmm. We shall see, man. I, I, I'm, still, I'm still touch and go. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Double J, to carry over a little bit from Leon's point, talk about bats. Are the Yankees' bats good enough, not that they beat the Twins, but good enough to win it all or at least get to the World Series this year? Or does that whole adage about good pitching beat good hitting just – a misnomer. Well, just something to say. Well, I'm going to say, yeah, because here's the thing. If you look at this, that particular series, there was no hero for the Yankees. You're talking about no Reggie Jackson, huh? The roster top to bottom, 25 dudes that played well from top to bottom, literally across the board. You didn't have to look at, you know, RBIs, war, none of those stats. <laughs> It was just literally the team in sync playing together. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who, if everyone's firing like that, that is the most dangerous team that you can possibly come up against in the playoffs. I agree. And, and, and let's, let's, let's help them out here because. Oh, let's stop say, it. The Yankees, this is a, no, 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 no. He's saying the truth because let's look at this now, true, on though. paper. This is a team that has been being built now, whether you've been paying attention or not, whether you've been, you're a Yankee fan or not. This team is being built and has been built where every position is now well attended. He said absolute truth. And that's why people are, are, are wondering, like, okay, the national media is paying attention. Like, the Yankees just came out of nowhere. But people who know, know this team has been coming for some time. And it's just their arrive now. That's a fact. Well, I, I don't yeah, have... Absolutely, Brother Rich. And, and, oh, here's the thing. <laughs> you got to remember here, Glaber Torres is, tw- what, 21 years old? Yeah, guess what? And, or he's 22, and so, is, uh, and so is Luis uh, Arrez. So you're talking about when that's the true sign of building something. When you have young stars and they're, and they're not letting the moment be – uh, consume them. So this is, right. I'm telling you now, this is the time they're doing what the Dodgers should have done over the past four years. Back. Mm, the you, point. You know what? Cry me a river. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I just, I will admit. No, Double J, see, it's okay to say that kind of, glo- uh, that's kind of beautiful stuff, but you got to say it about the Cowboys. No, you don't. You don't have to say oh. it about the Cowboys. No, you don't have to say about the Cowboys. Brother Rich, you're muted for 28 minutes. Um, yeah, you don't have to say about the Cowboys. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I respect Brooklyn. I stayed in Brooklyn, the concrete jungle. Mad love to the Tim Boots, you know what I'm saying, in the A-trains with all due respect. But, man, I'm, I'm not here. George Steinbrenner ain't walking through that door. And I won't say the Double J's lying. He is telling the truth. However, what you're saying to me in this instance is that good pitching, the expression, if you want to call it that, beats good hitting, is something, it's just lip service. If you're telling me the Yankees' bats are that good that there's no pitching or pitchers, because I'm going to mention a team now that I can't wait for the matchup to happen because it's definitely going to happen, seeing again, of course, how the Yankees just swept the Twins. 
I ain't even know the oh, twins. Was, I ain't even know the twins was in the playoffs. Slow down, Double J. We gonna get you to your Ohio State athletic director's job here shortly. We know you. We know you got the drop top running right. We got you. Slow down there, young fella. Okay. I just want to remind y'all though. You don't talk smack to the Gator in the swamp. In this case, the moderator, the show originator, right now. Until you get across the other side. My gosh. He's speaking I, from experience with the way it's changed when he was a swamp more recently. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. I tell you. I'm so glad somebody ain't in Cleveland on 99th and Huff no more. Because I'm telling you, next time you come into this city, I'm going to have to make a call. Uh, yeah, anywho. <laughs> Boy, y'all firing on all 14 and a half cylinders today. Not. I respect the Yankees. I respect Brooklyn. I ain't saying that they won't. But moving on to the Rays and the Astros, the team, I think. Well, hang on. Hang on a second. Hold on. Speaking of, to your point about good pitching versus good hitting. The Astros pitching is better. Speaking of 14 and a half, I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it a step further. Oh boy, here the we Yankees go. Yankees went their starters went 14 and two thirds innings, giving up four runs and striking out 19. Against who? So you mm. tell me. Oh, against who? Against the Twins. The oh Twins boy, series. please. Oh, every scrub could get a nut every now and again. Whoopie do. Next. I, it's a it's a it's a true number. It it happened. It happened. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but we always talk about the level of competition played against, right? Strength of schedule. Have we talked about that on the show before? Yes, we have. The twins, the same team we said we didn't even know was in the playoffs until they got you swept. Can only play who's in front of you? Oh boy, here we go with the father Mogany speech. <laughs> oh my gosh! I want you all to go out there and win one for the Gipper, please. All ties are due next week. We need the money, people. Uh, anyway, the Rays and the Astros. Yeah, I'm ready for y'all today, even though my back do hurt. I mean, really, really do hurt. I did take some medication, though. I should be good for another six and a half hours. Um, minus the side effects. Yeah, um, the Rays at the Astros. Uh, Leon, we're going we're gonna to ask you, uh, are the Strolls clicking on all cylinders again? Because I got something special for that, Double J and Brother Rich. Is, I'll say that again. It's called what? What is it called? I mean, I, I, they pitching is dangerous. Oh, you know I mean? yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. They pitching is dangerous. I mean, it kind of like, it's kind of like with them, it's like, like, if they get, like, it goes back to your question about can good pitching be good hitting? Yeah. Good pitching can be good hitting. If you get, because we had we just seen series where where where, where uh, teams that had big bats. Remember those Toronto teams a couple mm-hmm. years ago when they had Batista and mm-hmm. and, and the other cats, mm-hmm. and they go get a good pitching staff like the Indians, and they get you could they couldn't hit up hit up anything. Couldn't hit a bull in the backside with a shovel. Like, yeah, I repeat, right. couldn't hit a bull in the backside with a shovel. Right. right. Go ahead. You know, so like. It, it, so going forward, if if Houston does uh, advance and beat and faces the Yankees, that's going to be something to look out for. No because question. If, 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 if that pitching staff is hitting on all cylinders, I don't care how big them bats is, you can't hit what you can't see, man. Ooh, we. All right. All right. Slow it down there, young fella. Slow it down there, Kimo Sabi. Brother Rich, this is to you. With all due respect to the concrete jungle. Brother Rich, don't play me like that, man. You, Of all people, you know me. I played at the Rucker, man. How you gonna talk to I, me the way I, you talk to me, and I, I played at the Rucker, do. man? I certainly do. Well, I'm just saying. I certainly do know we love go, and re- I, I know love and respect you. Nevertheless, we you go know all the way back. We keep it with, with each other, and so, <laughs> but we keep it hundred with each other, and as we keep it under each other, I just want to point out to our audience and to our co-hosts here that there's a pattern, Double J, that this man happens to o- always pull for the teams from Texas. He's a Cowboys fan. What? And now I knew that's where Uh-oh. he was going with this conversation. It's for the Astros. He's, I knew that's where he was going to point out he's for the Astros. That's why he was not so no, on I'm the not. Yankees because he believed the Astros. He's, he believed the Astros are the, this, they're going to beat the Yankees because of pitching. No. And I'm here to I... tell you, and, and pardon me, America, for saying this. I'm <laughs> saying this as a fan, as a fan, but also as a person that respects the game of baseball. The Yankees, uh, the Yankees are going to beat 
the uh, hey, uh, hey, like a rented mule. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey. Did he say a rented mule? Really? This ain't enterprise. Nobody's coming to pick you up. <laughs> this nobody's coming to pick you up, man. That was a nice one. That was a nice play on words. I like that, bro, Rich. I really did. That was I, a good one. Listen, it was good. But let me say this. I wish you all would stop intentionally, deliberately, purposely, misconstruingly, Lee, me with Texas. See, let me tell you why. I know what y'all are doing. I know what y'all are doing. Y'all think y'all gonna y'all know y'all trying not to have no third passenger in that drop top, but it's cool. I told y'all I don't want to go. I'm gonna be at the house chilling in my bunny slippers whenever the parade go down. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> whether it's the OK Corral or some other style, um. I'm not saying that I want the Astros to beat the Yankees. I was asking the question, the expression, good pitching beats good hitting. Does it have, was it just a cliche, so to speak? The Yankees have good bats. And for this series against the Twins, their pitching did look stellar. Those are all facts. But, I mean, are we going to ignore Verlander looking like he didn't got a second life, lease, lease on life up on that mound? Now, granted, in the Rays series, Zach Greinke, which is I wanted to ask you, Brother Rich, was that just a bad outing against the Rays in that 10-3 loss? Or something to be said, is Zach not who Zach should be? But then, you know, they got – who? What's the, what's, the, um, what's the number two guy for the Astros, Double J, in the rotation? Why well, can't think of his name? Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, thank you. For a minute, I didn't think Double J was going to help me out because seeing how he think he's looking at his watch, I'm making him late for his athletic director appointment interview at Ohio State job secondary. I'm making him late for that. Eh, uh, yeah, um, I don't know, man. I'm just asking the question, man. I was just asking the question. Should the Strohs and Yankees, well, I don't see why it won't be, in the ALDS – is it the pitching or the hitting that's going to win out? That's all I'm asking. Double J? Well, let's, let's get to game five first, because I believe there is going to be, potentially could be a game five. Speaking of your boy Verlander, and I'm going to actually be on that train with you for this one because of his uh, tie back to, to Detroit. Um, oh, uh, Really? Here is where I err. I strongly <laughs> encourage you to err on the side of caution. Or, uh, or err on the side of the bats. Second or to err on the side of the big bats. This is only the second or third time in Verlander's career that he's pitching on short rest. Now, for you and I and everybody else that works at any kind of nine to five, if we were to have three or four days off and then had to work again, uh, versus five i'm sure we would be plenty fresh but uh you know when you're throwing at that velocity and that's what i want to point out if you look at how granky got beat up it was curveball curveball change up all under 80 miles an hour yeah where was the slider that's at? why when you're talking about guys like garrett cole and justin verlander their strength is with their velocity if Verlander does oh, not yeah. have it, pay very close attention to the first inning. Because if he does yeah, not that have is, it, he's that's gonna true. get hit. That's true. And we will have Good a point. game five. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I can't argue that, not one bit. That's one bit. That's very that's a very astute observation too. Because most people don't pick up on that that early. You know what I mean? They figure, uh, no matter how what the outcome is after the first frame, they just figure, ah, oh, it's just the first frame. But you're right. He that that says a lot about how he's going to be Verlander, that is, later on down the line. Yeah, um, I don't know, Lee. What, who you got? Who you got in this? Who you got? Astros and Rays. I'm surprised the Rays. I didn't even know they were in the playoffs, to tell you the truth. You know, I kept seeing bits and pieces on the news uh, here and there. You know, I thought it was the Brewers, to tell you. <laughs> then I seen, wow, the Rays? Okay, they're in the American League. I get it, but didn't know it was them. Go ahead. Yeah, I was kind of, yeah, I, I kind of didn't hear nothing about them all year, honestly. So I was kind of shocked they was there, but they kind of, they usually are uh, a playoff team. They never, they never really do much. But they usually are a playoff team. But um, as far as this series though, I'm I, I'm I'm very I'm definitely gonna pay attention to what Double J said because 
how you said about Verlander being a, a, a velocity pitcher and having to use a lot of velocity. If he ain't got it, if, if his pitches are a little bit slower than usual, he start getting hit. It's gonna be a problem. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, I can. and so, but um, as of right now, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Houston right now. I'm gonna go with Houston as of right now. But I wouldn't be shocked if Tampa Bay took the series though. Mm. I really wouldn't be. Yeah, I would, actually. And if Houston does what I think they should do, I think that this series against the Yankees, actually, in all honesty, would be very compelling. Because Aaron Judge is a he Yeah, is, I think so, too. Yeah, Aaron Judge is that dude, for sure, for sure. But we'll finally get to He's see some... some Yeah, we'll finally get to see some... some un, un, as in you, in unlopsided competitive performances from both squads, meaning that the outcome will be hanging in the balance on every pitch, every swing. You get what I'm saying? That's all I'll be looking for. Fact. Even in football, baseball, you know, uh, basketball, you know what I'm saying? All of these blown comebacks and leads, that, that's bad for the fabric. I mean, it's nice to talk about, man, but if you look at how they how they transpire, all these, all these lopsided performances, how they come about, man, it just they bad. It's like eating a spoonful of cinnamon. Yeah, um, the number to call is area code 216. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say here? Yeah, I said 216, boy. Yeah, I'm not feeling it today. The medication is wearing off. Area code is 267-687-0026. That number again is area code 267-687-0026. We're in the last portion of the discussion topic of the show, and we're moving on to the NFL, some of the most notable team performances from Week 5. We start with the Seahawks. And I have to ask this question, Brother Rich, we coming to you, because I know you've been a fan of Russell Wilson for a long time. Long, long time. Fact. Um, the Seahawks, I asked, you know, they, I mean, to me, they, are they an under-the-radar Super Bowl contender? Let me put it that way. And it's, it's been some question, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's the second part of that, though. It's been some question about Russell Wilson being elite. Is he elite in your mind? Absolutely. It's, absolutely. I think so, too. Absolutely. I, I think so, too. And absolutely. You, now, I, see, I think people confuse whether people confuse elite and light in his circumstance. Is he light? No, he may not be the most liked player because there was a lot of envy and jealousy surrounding his rise because he had a, a rise on and off the field that a lot of his contemporaries mm. had some issues with him about. And so it was more to them disliking him. But on the football field, as a football player, as a human being, as an individual, he's always performed on and off the field as a superior individual and athlete. And that is his stats bear that out and his life and his lifestyle and his family life bears that out as well. Yeah. Um, Double J, we'll go to you next. But before we do, I just want to throw in right quick. I go back to when we talk about Russell Wilson and the Seahawks in particular. Uh, <clears throat> number one, I'm pointing out here first and foremost that Pete Carroll is starting to get on my M nerves. Number, that's number one. Number two, I go back to, and, and this is about Wilson in particular, that time when prior to, well, I forget, was it that Super Bowl season? Prior to that season, the Seahawks had brought in Matt Flynn. And basically, they brought in Matt Flynn based off of his performance against. And I forget who, whatever, one of them performances, he had one game performance that just was lights out. And I get it. Cash in while you can, right? They brought him in. They bring Russell Wilson in. In training camp. I don't even think they had even gotten to the first preseason game. I could, I could be wrong. Double J, Leon, y'all might know a little bit better than me. You too, of course, Brother Rich. But I don't think they even got, the Seahawks hadn't even got to the first preseason game. And they was giving Matt Flynn his walking papers. Okay? Here it is. This dude, Russell Wilson, come in. Um, I don't, was he undrafted, Double J? Oh no, Russell Wilson. Third one. Okay, oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, my bad, yep. my bad. Okay, that's fine. But anyway, in other words, they they paid Matt Flynn to be their quarterback. I told him you can keep your money, you can keep the money, and here and here go car keys to a new Tesla. See you, bye. But we picking this guy. All right, that's all I need to know. Yeah, he don't do it to the, the tune like a Brady and a Mahomes. He ain't flashy and all of that kind of stuff. But I tell you what, I don't care what game it is that he in and what the stakes are, how high, how low, whatever, I ain't betting against him. Go ahead, Double J. 
But absolutely, you're talking about a guy who went seven or seventeen of twenty three, and managed to throw four touchdowns in a game that you got to remember. Here we talk about, uh, and I know you're you're upset with Pete Carroll, but I actually want to give that entire front office a lot of credit here because if you remember what their biggest issue was going into last year as well as this season was the offensive line and being able to establish a running game. And even throughout the first five weeks of the season, they've somewhat had a a running back by committee. They keep wanting to to have Chris Carson be the guy. And he, he was able to do that. So when you you talk about a St. Louis, I'm sorry, a, a Rams defense overall that has guys like Aaron Donald breathing down on you and you're able to only miss six, you only have six incompletions. And yeah, then, of course, impressive. we all saw that throw, that, it, it, you know, throw hurt around the world uh, with, you know, where he mm. was able to just thread the needle there. It was yeah, That very well could be both the, the play and catch of the year. Um, you can't say enough about him. He's, he's very much Drew Brees-esque because, again, you're talking about being undersized, uh, initially being labeled as a running quarterback which, yes, he has that capability, but he will beat you through the air, and he does it time and time again. It would surprise me if they don't win the division this season. Yeah. um, I don't know if I can really argue with that. I might slightly say the 49ers could be breathing down their neck, but we'll get to them in a minute as well. But, yeah, I I couldn't argue with that. I will ask you, Leon, um, in particular, Double J just mentioned that throw. Now, there were some people, I saw the throw, actually. It looked good to me, I mean, from whatever angle. But more importantly, the catch and the presence of mind to get them feet in. Man, this is why I say, man, I know I never played at the professional level, man, but it's some fundamentals, regardless of what level you own, that have to be implored in every situation. You can't tell me that this guy was not – I forget who caught the pass, but it was a heady play. You see how he looked down to make sure his feet were going to be – y'all probably didn't catch that. He made sure his feet were going to be down first and then mm-hmm. had the presence of mind to catch the ball, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's textbook. Yeah. Yeah, the player was Tyler, Tyler Lockett who caught the ball. Okay, got you. Tyler man, Lockett. First of all, first of all, the difficulty of that throw – Roll it to your left, and you right-handed, full speed, and you're throwing the ball not only to a player, but you're throwing it to a spot. And the spot is the, 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 the amount of difficulty even to make that mm-hmm. throw to get it there. He threw about 25 yards mm-hmm. to get it there and get to in that spot. To give him a chance that's to a, catch that's, it. That's, that's, that's elite. Yeah. That's elite. The, the throw was phenomenal. The catch was amazing. But <laughs> Russell Wilson – is so unique for the simple fact. Yeah, he's a short guy, but he's compact. He's not no like short stick. He's like 5'10", 5'11", like 220. Yeah. He, that's a tough dude to bring down. Yeah, yeah. And he got a gun. Yeah. And sure not only do. that, not only that, he's able to cre- to extend plays with his legs. It was a couple of plays in that Dallas game where they had him dead to right. They had him dead to right. And he just like a pinball just bounced out of there. See, we need to see. Got rid of the ball, made a completion. And you can just tell when you got, we play against a player like that as a defense, those break your back. We got a, yep. a, a team third and 10, third and 11, and you getting ready to get them off the field. And you tired. And you ready, and you ready to office. The office might be clicking now. They might got a little rhythm now. And all of a sudden, it just got to go on 30 11, and he make that kind of play and get 15 yards. Back to back, do that. Back to back. You're like, what the heck? What can I do? Yeah. And a player like Russell Wilson, when he's so elite, he breaks your morale. He breaks your will. Mm. Because once you he, he they once he gets done with you, like you say, it ain't the prettiest, it ain't the best, but every game he makes a, a couple of throws and does a couple of things and make your jaw drop. And yep. make you think, man, hey, like you say, Pete Carroll, he he, he knew something when he really, when he got when he got him in third round. Yeah. And he gave Matt Flynn all his money and and told Matt Flynn, man, I don't even want to see you play no more. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Come on, Russell. Go ahead. You know what? Um he, 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 Yeah, that's definitely them good points for sure, for sure. But double J, let me come back to you right quick. Is Russell Wilson the most complete quarterback currently? 
And I don't mean that passe. I mean, yeah. is he the most complete? You know, I mean, the guy's a smart player. You don't really hear him about him often not knowing when to slide. You know, a lot of the questions you might hear from announcers about other quarterbacks, regardless of who they are, you know what I mean? He just is, again, is he the most complete quarterback in terms of what he can do? Well, I mean, mind? yeah, absolutely he is. You look around the league and you see players that, you know, may their stats may actually be significantly higher than his. You know, such as somebody like Mahomes, and uh, but again, or even uh, occasionally in down in Houston. Uh, but uh, with him, you know, you don't hear anything off the field. He's a model citizen, and uh, you know, again, very faith driven. Especially in 2019, he has no problem with that, and uh, I admire that about him. Um, and then on the field, the guy is. You know, let's let's face it here. You can plug in about over half of the league into that offense, and they will not have the same level of success. I would actually go on the limb and say over 80% of the league starting quarterbacks could not have the same record and put up the same numbers that Russell Wilson is with that same team. Uh, yeah, simply I put, he has no Pro Bowl caliber receivers at this point. You know, say what you will, DK Metcalf, like I said, he runs routes like that old, you know, uh, magnet football, you know, that you would get for Christmas <laughs> in the early 90s. Yeah. And right. he, Tyler Lockett is is a glorified slot receiver. Yeah. You but know, they, they seem to make plays for him. The number one. They seem to go, they, in order to make a oh, play for him, they go, uh, they go above and beyond. I think that is very important. I really do. I think they go, they go above and beyond to make plays for him. I think that the whole team go above and beyond and to make plays for him. Defense, too. Special teams, I do. Exactly. I do. I just think he is a catalyst like no other in, in the NFL at that position What's today. What's impressive to me as well with him is that that defense had no sack on Jared Goff. And they were still – so you're talking about just generally speaking, they had some success, but they were not the catalyst to why they won. It was – simply Russell Wilson. So, again, his ability to, to have the timing and presence of mind to know when to get out of the pocket and know when to slide and just his decision-making as a whole, to answer your question bluntly, absolutely he's the most complete quarterback. I think so, too. Brother Rich, the Raiders are not a myth, it would seem. Do you agree or disagree? They certainly are not a myth. They were not a myth. Um, the question was not whether or not they were a myth. The question was whether or not they could do anything. And I remain fully committed to the idea that they are not going to do anything. Okay, so let me ask you this then. And this question is for Double J and Leon as well, but Brother Rich, of course, you up first. That 24-21 win over the Bears, that Bears defense a week ago, I mean – Look like they were the only thing that Bears team was missing in general. Is this was, the Bears team that doesn't have a quarterback? Is that the, is that the team you're talking about? Right, I'm talking that, about. Right, I was. I was. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, not. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I was getting ready to say okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought you were talking about them playing against a real. When the moon hits your eye right like that. a great pizza pie and some more day. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I didn't do a very good rendition, but you all get the idea. We talking about the Bears defense, brother Rich. <clears throat> And until a week ago, it was vaunted, okay, the Raiders. Who do the Raiders have? Amari right. Cooper, Larry Fitzgerald, Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, Odo Beckham Jr., Tyler Lockett even. Who do the Raiders have at wide out? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> going once? Going twice? I got all mad Definitely. love and respect for the Bears, man. But there's no way that the Raiders should have been able to do that to that Bears defense. No way. Oh, and I got two words for y'all. Josh Jacobs. That's the guy I picked. I know I don't get credit on this p program for many things, but I'm going to take the credit for that one. I picked Josh Jacobs. Guy's doing pretty good, I say. <laughs> what about you, Double J? Is he doing pretty good? No? Maybe? Are you still hating? Well, I'm doing great because my fantasy roster, I picked up the tight end from the Raiders, uh, Waller, before the season started. Oh, right. Where'd you, who, where'd you get your inside information from? Matthew Barry? 
Boy, this guy here. No, no, I, I just knew that there was 150 targets, and Derek Carr had to find somebody. So I actually have both uh, <laughs> uh, the gentleman at, at receiver who was out last week in Waller. Wow, really? So you, in other words, you're gonna just throw a shot at the guy and then come back with the with the left hand too, huh? My gosh, Can't absolutely. He, that's yeah. how. That's why winners win. <clears throat> yeah, got you, uh, Leon. Are you impressed with what the Raiders were able to do over the Bears? And what happened to the Bears, that Bears defense? Oh, man, I have no idea. That kind of, that game caught me off guard. I expected the Bears to, 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 to really smash them, but I think Khalil Mack might have been a little too emotional. About it's possible. The game. It's possible. Because he was looking forward to it too much. He kind of, it's and, possible. But with that being said, I mean, Josh Jacobs put on the show. I mean, he ran for 123 <laughs> yards. A couple of touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I like the kid at Alabama. I mean, the, the kid runs hard. The kid, he runs smart. And they find a way to get him involved in the offense. And Derek Carr didn't wow you, but he ain't got a roster to wow you with. But he was efficient. And uh, they had a good game plan. And you know what? So, I mean. Well, let me tell you. Right. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, hold up, Double J. Let him finish his thought. Let him finish his thought. Yeah, okay. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, Lee, Lee. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, but see, no, 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 yeah, hold, it, hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Lee, what we do on this program, if somebody wants to interject, I hear the voice, but the person that's speaking, I let them finish, and then I go to the person who wanted to interject. Double J just sponging the line. See, ever since him and Brother Richard decided to roll in the drop top <laughs> down south to Miami, to hang out with Uncle Luke, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ever since they decided they was going to roll together, you know what I'm saying? You know, the male version of Thelma and Louise type stuff. You know what I'm saying? They're going to roll hard. You know what I mean? You know, they you know they just been trying to kick me to the side, kick sand in my face, man. And I'm not going to let it happen. I'm not going to stand for it. You can't handle the truth. Anyway, Double J, what were you saying? Probably mount, mount, didn't mount too much, well, but go I ahead. I wanted to point out to, to, to Leon's point that it wasn't necessarily the Bears' defense, but how many games are you going to win? When you at, combined as a team, you have fifty yards, under fifty yards rushing. Oh, uh, you looking for Matt Forte? I'll call, I'll give him a call because they're gonna need him, right? I, I actually I could call Matt. They probably should. Well, Double J, they that's, probably, yeah, all the do twenty five yards from Montgomery was yeah. not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, and I I get it. it's, it's any team. I, so I guess giving up twenty four to the Raiders. In that instance, with the offense being so bad for the Bears, I guess it's, it's, it's admi- admirable. But even still, man, nobody's talking about the Raiders' offense at all, other than Josh Jacobs, really. Still lightweight, unacceptable to me. But, you know, again, and the reason why I picked Josh Jacobs and I wanted to point out that I picked Josh Jacobs, you know, we all did, you know, what, how, what, a couple months ago we did the story, we did the, on the show, we did the background, his, his, he he plays like he has his background in mind on every play. Right. Yeah. Right. This is what I'm saying. So in that in that instance, when you got that internal fire going, that don't mean that the other guy in front of you is is either less than or better than or that you're gonna always win them. But you're gonna always let the other guy in front of you know what you're here for today. And that's all it's about for me, man. That's all it is for me. That's all it's about for me, man. You know, I don't I don't get caught up in the stats and you know all of that kind of y'all know my y'all know my story, man. Y'all know my story. I'm I'm glad for Josh Jacobs because boy oh boy for a minute there, them Alabama running backs were looking terrible after Trent Richardson. He was giving him a bad name. <laughs> then you got uh Derrick Henry and then Josh Jacobs. Yeah, my boy. Glad to see him doing well. Okay, brother Rich. This is for you and double J. Lee will let you weigh in, of course. That Packers. Cowboys. We're going to talk about the Packers first. Settle down, Kimo Sabi. Settle <laughs> down. Settle down. And then we'll get to the mm. <laughs> the Dallas National. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even say nothing smart. Yeah, go, yeah, I can't even say nothing board. smart. The Dallas the Cowboys, Cowboys, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, now everybody got their chocolate milk with the bunny on the front. Now everybody wants to stir. I hear everybody click, 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 stirring up their chocolate milk. Anyway, which kind of you drink? No, we just brought the what? You brought the cheese for that wine. How right. about how about you get <laughs> how about you get a burger for some of them French cries? Anywho, <laughs> the Packers 
after demolishing, so to speak, or should I say putting up 34 on the Cowboys, they seem to be playing with a balance that even though they had uh, got a nice little record so far this season, they kind of looking like they might be a real threat in that NFC. Oh, and can you say Aaron Jones? Where did he come from, Double J? Well, and that's just it. That's what the Packers have been seeking for the better part of, of two to three years is a is an established running game. You know, you've thrown guys like in years past like Ty Montgomery in there, and now Aaron Jones is able to get five and a half yards per carry, which is that is shows that, that your O line is vastly improved. And that Rodgers, that means he has time, which that's a dangerous thing for any team. But against the Cowboys and that vaunted defense that everybody talks about, specifically our esteemed host. Hey, stop using my lines. Stop using my lines. Find your own words. Continue. (laughs) But, again, you're not going to be. Vaunted. Stop it. You're going to make me mute to hit the mute button. You're going to all lie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh, I kill me. Go ahead. Let me, I'll let you finish. Maybe. Go ahead. It it was land, sea, and air in Jerry world, and you were ducking for cover in that Salvation Army. Kettle. Get it right. Kettle. Right, and I'm gonna need you to drop a n- couple yeah, coins there next time. Yeah, next time you see the guy, ding a ling a ling a ling, ring the bell, drop some coins, baby. You're not gonna keep coming from what do they call that place of gambling? The casino in Detroit, and walking by, past the guy with the red kettle. You're not gonna keep getting away with that, Double J. I'm hip to you. We got cameras. We see things. Yeah, brother Rich. Are the Packers for real, man? Sure. The Packers for real. An NFC? A real threat? I will use the one word that comes to mind with them is overrated. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me say it again. I'll repeat it. (laughs) Here's here's why I'm saying that, and I'm going to be clear on this. I do not take football teams that play in the cold climate when it gets what we know is about to happen when it turns into the frozen tundra, especially a quarterback that has had several injuries, when it gets cold like that, then we have to find out how that body that has been injured over several, I think this is one of the challenges that Andrew Luck had and these players have playing in those cold departments because anybody that's ever experienced any form of arthritis or had any injury has had any kind of surgery knows that during the colder months, those injuries are harder to rehab, mm-hmm. to warm up. Um, uh, um, and so this is a man, a young man that has had s- some tremendous surgeries in the last two years. And so, so I, I don't get excited about Green Bay as of yet. I believe, unfortunately, I believe that we've seen the best of Aaron Rodgers. I believe that. Well, and I believe he's on the other side of the hill now. And whether or not, so we're seeing flashes of what he is because he's still who he is. But nevertheless, I, the question remains: Does he hold up under the rigor of a football season? Before we get excited about. It? Well, you speak of injuries and being cold. Uh, I raise my hand on that one, and I don't have a contract of any kind, unfortunately. <laughs> but I got the same kind of injury. Uh, yeah, and the colder they get, the more the winters, and the older I get, the more tougher it is to even get out of the bed, man. I'm telling you, it can be. Sometimes I get an ache in my right knee, man. I can't, and I don't care if I Epsom salt. You can't rub it out. No, this is one of the things you just got to wait till it subsides. And sometimes it can take a day or two. And believe me, it weighs so heavy on your mind, man, because it's just a nagging thing. You just, no, man, you can't walk. It hurts to put pressure mm-hmm. on all of that. I'm telling you. And I'm, it don't even be snow on the ground. It just be the temperature just then took a dip. Okay, so we ain't talking about going out there getting hit by two, three hundred pound linemen, and you done fractured your clavicle two hundred and ten times. Yeah, it's real, baby. Yeah, they deserve every bit of dime and every bit of dollar that they get. That's why you know I won't say nothing when they ask me is he worth it. Anyway, that was a little sidebar. My bad. <clears throat> yeah. Um, 
Lee, I'm gonna ask you, man. Them Packers, who gonna beat them in that NFC? If they keep going the way they're going, who gonna beat them in the NFC? I mean, uh, I'm with Brother Rich as far as you know. I'm still waiting to see see with them. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers, you got you got a chance. But he brought up some good points though, because like as you say, as we get older. Injuries take longer to heal, and that cold weather does make things different. It does. I know with my back, your knee, like I said, shoulder stuff like that, and the cold things can get difficult. And all and with the NFL, all you need is have that one game. You know, ain't no or series; one, it's, it's, it's one and done. A one bad game. <laughs> so, right, you have one bad game from your whole season going down the drain. You know, but uh, as far as yesterday, they jumped out on Dallas early. I mean, they jumped out on them early. I think got to what thirty one ten or thirty one three, something like that. Yeah, don't 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 really go it, into it. Got, it, got, it, it got, you got you can't really. You know go. What I'm saying it got away faster. So no, I'm just saying because so I got my played, two other played. my two other co-hosts over there. They they you know they writing stuff down. You know these things that we can say can be used against hey, but, me. Go but, ahead. But Jay, but did you say this this show is based off truth? Yes. But I'm, no, I didn't say don't tell the truth. I'm saying Bro. I didn't. No, I didn't say don't tell the truth. I'm saying don't tell too much of the truth for these two over here, I'm, not these two over here. No, because they they like attorneys. <laughs> they use every word. You know what I'm saying? So less is more in this case with these two when it comes to the cowboys and all of that. So I'm just saying, man, I need somebody on my side today. It, it's getting ready to get heated. Uh, no. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> See, what 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 did you say, Double J? What happened? I did I hear the peanut gallery? Would, See what I'm saying? This is what I mean, Leon. This is what I'm talking about. You I can't remember, get remember, Leon. Oh gosh, you can't you get easy. Remember that when it comes to the Cowboys' loss, it hurts more than that that accident he was in. Oh wow! <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, see, see, this, that's what I was driving at, Leah. They, they never, they never miss out on nothing like that. <laughs> Imagine that. They can miss my phone calls all day. Hey, hey, y'all gonna be on the show today? Uh, oh, you called me. I didn't know you called me, but let me say some, say some, somebody say something about the Cowboys. Oh my gosh, my phone's ringing and sliding off the dresser. <laughs> you know what I'm saying all this text messaging and reason I'm getting. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, right. Okay, so anyway, up next is the Cowboys. I will refrain from saying anything. I will give the floor to Brother Richard. Brother Richard, you only have 28 minutes, okay? So I'm going to need you to get your Stephen, get your Stephen A. Get your, I'm going to need you to get your Stephen A on. Hello. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you have the floor. And then Double, double J, I will give you 27 and a half minutes, seeing how you can't decide whether or not you want to be a Michigan you State know, fan or a Michigan Wolverine fan was, or a Purdue I alumni. Taught, I don't know. I was taught you should be magnanimous in victory, and you shouldn't mock your enemy. Oh, please. Oh, so stop see, it. When you see a less fortunate individual <laughs> who has been pretending to be what they not, and then they find out that they're not what they were pretending to be, and then as someone famous said, God rest his soul, they are who we all thought they were, and that is nothing, an overrated <laughs> pile of nothingness. That's what they are. Nothingness. Cowboy dung. Nothing. <laughs> no, did he say? Did he just say cowboy dung? Oh my gosh, we on national TV. I can't believe it. I can't. Yeah, he did say that. Oh, Double J, you found that really hilariously funny. I, I, I presume, right? Got you, got you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Double J, before you say anything, facts. yeah. Oh, facts. Oh, now oh, wow. you want facts? Facts. Yeah, I got a facts for you. Two one six facts. Um. Yeah, I won't lie. The Cowboys can't seem to beat anybody with a winning record. Apparently. Go ahead, Double J. Have your say. Well, again. Oh no, no, no! Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. No, no, no. We're not gonna. You know, no, we're not gonna come in all calm and collected like Frank Sinatra on this one. Go, go handle it like you do when you be texting me. <laughs> Don't try to be smooth operator, Michael Jacksonus, something. Yeah, spit it. Come with it. Let's face it here. Oh, Your boy. sorry Cowboys defense. This he made they made Aaron Jones look like Walter Payton. Sixteen <laughs> right. <big> tackles. <laughs> Dak Prescott 
look like Stevie Wonder out there. You know what, Double J? I'm going to tell you right now. You're getting, you getting, you, you going to get cut out of the shop report wheel. You are. You just cut out. You just cut out. You might get a couple AARP coupons, and that's it. Uh, Brother Rich, you keep it up. You right behind him. Go ahead. Finish, Double J. <laughs> <laughs> Helen. <laughs> you know who is? You know who I was? Not Helen, but Ellen DeGeneres was in there. And in the Cowboys box, having nothing but a great time as she watched the Packers absolutely walk all over your Cowboys. Oh, save it. I can't wait. You know what? You better make sure Ohio State don't take no L's because you and Brother Richard going to get that business. Moving right along, the Colts looked impressive in a close one over the Chiefs. Can we all agree on that, gentlemen? Yes, no, maybe, before I continue? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm impressed that they continue to get to the pass with just the front four. Now, we all know football well enough to know that if you can get to the passer with just four, i.e. the Giants twice (coughs) against the (coughs) Patriots, what that do for the back end of that defense, any defense. So, you know, getting there with just four, good things will continue to happen for that defense. And I want to point out or give a spotlight somewhat to my man Frank Reich who, uh, right as of right now, is proving to be what you will want in a head coach. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my man, the D coordinator, Matt Eberfluss. <laughs> he deserves a ton of credit, too. Uh, but before I let one of you all weigh in, just to mention about Frank Reich, he happened to be the engineer of two of the most infamous comebacks in football history. Not NFL history, football history in general. That Maryland comeback, what year was that, Double J? Do you know, by the way, 1980-something? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, it was. It was. Wow, even for you, that must have been a while ago. For you to say it was a while ago, because you, you hit me with the years right off the bat. But, yeah, that he was the quarterback in Maryland on the comeback, an a infamous comeback in that one. I think they were down huge, just like they were in, when he was quarterback in the Bills uh, against the Oilers, who, and I don't anybody remember that game, I mean, who didn't think that the Oilers was going to win? Ernest Givens and Jefferson and Warren Moon and Lonzo Highsmith was on that team too, I believe. Man, they had the Oilers had a squad. Yep. They had a squad. I just knew they was and they was up thirty five to three. Man, I went to go get some chips, came back, and Frank was engineering one of his drives. So anyway, I just saying kudos to my man Frank Reich, who I think is a dynamite head coach and. Better things are on the horizon for this guy. But, yeah, Double J, well, I mean, what 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 about the Colts, man? Did they look impressive to you or no? Over the Chiefs? Absolutely. Um, you know, again, as you pointed out, one of the bigger takeaways here is that uh, I think something's wrong with Mahomes. Um, I'm yeah, we'll mention that in a minute. I'm concerned about potential for that. Yeah. Um, but as far as the Colts go, Marlon Mack firing on all cylinders. So their ability to, you know, again, as we, we say week after week about what Jacoby Brissett doing, again, the only touchdown in the game coming from him. Uh, of course, Adam Vinatieri still proving, despite uh, a little mishap a few weeks ago, that he can still get the job done, uh, making all of his pivotal field goals. But again, that defense, um, something that many – are not pointing out, including yourself, uh, is Robert, I believe it's Robert Mathis, is that he's on the uh, the Colt coaching staff. Oh, I didn't know that. See, that's what the show is here for. That's what the P program is about, people. I did not know. The former Colts linebacker. Pretty darn good one, too. But even more interesting yeah. is the fact that not only was he a good player, but apparently um, – because them linebackers is pretty good too for the Colts. That him, his knowledge well, it, is translating. Keep in mind. It, Go ahead. Well, he's a pass rush consultant, and you talked about the ability to get to the quarterback with just the four. Yeah. And if you remember, that was one of his specialties. Yes, it was. I think he has a lot to do with this being an unsung hero as to why this defense is doing some things that I don't think any of us were seeing 
going into the season. Yeah, I couldn't even lie about that. Leon, what you say, man? You think the Colts uh, got a chance to make some serious noise as the season goes on? I mean, yeah. I mean, right now, like you said, Frank White, Frank White is in a great job with him. I mean, that defense and Marlon Mack has been has been has been special. I mean, For that sure. defense, like you say, if you get, if you're able to get pressure with this four this four people consistently. Like Richard Sherman had a, a great quote in a annihilation last night Browns game, where he told Nick Bosa, "You rush, recover. Y'all rush, recover." Mm. And that's basically what it is. If you rush, you do your job, and you rush with just y'all four, that sets up a whole other dynamic on defensively. The way you dictate, you go from being the the reacting to the aggressor. Could you please because repeat that? Dictating what you want to do. Could you please repeat what Richard Sherman said? Say that again. Could you please repeat what Richard Sherman said? Because that's said, what the game is about. Richard Sherman said, he told Nick Bosa and the whole defensive line, y'all rush, we cover. Y'all rush, we cover. And, and, and basically telling them, like, y'all take care of y'all part. Y'all and y'all doing y'all part, we got the back end. Mm-hmm. Because they ain't going to have time to even find anything because we're going to be on them. Mm-hmm. Just that simple. Hmm. And that sets the whole tone of the defense to where, as an offense now, you're basically playing, you're playing catch-up now. Hmm. And you can literally take the wheel out of a defense, I mean, out of an offense, and by them doing just that. Y'all rushing, them covering. And, and when, when, it, when it works simultaneously, it's, it's, it's a beautiful. thing of beauty. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, a beautiful thing. That's good stuff, dog. Brother Rich. So so, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish so your thought. Go ahead. So that would make them dangerous. Now, I don't trust Brissett Br- Br- as far as, like, is he good enough to get them to the playoffs, play with that defense? Yeah. And Marlon Mack doing what he's doing? Yeah. And as far, are they good enough to make any noise, like, big noise? No. Mm. I don't trust Brissett like that. Yeah. To him, to him, to him, to get, him to go get them a game or two yeah. with his arm. Got you. And that's kind of where I was going with that, Brother Rich. Um, would it surprise you to see the Colts in the AFC Championship this year? With no Andrew Luck? And of course, I know Andrew Luck is sitting somewhere. Like, dang! Now they find they now they go get an offensive line. But go ahead. It would it would not surprise me, and here's why: pull the tape on this. When we did our preseason picks on this program, we talked about the Colts, and what we said was the reason that there was so much frustration in Indianapolis was because this was a team that people thought could do some things this year. And the fact that he absented himself from the team early, the question became what would happen with the team be rudderless. And I believe it was on this program that our esteemed host said that we ought to pay attention to Jacoby Brissett and said that we should, that that he would surprise us. Hold on, hold on. He did surprise many of us. Hold on, hold on. Okay, thank you. Hold on, hold on. You gave me credit for saying something? Oh, I know you. Well, yeah, you must. I mean, I give credit where credit is. No, due. I stop give it. Where credit is due. You know what? Yeah, you know, I... you're you are the number one uh, Cowboys fan that I know, <laughs> and you are an honest man in terms of you know yeah. your pick. Yeah, on, you didn't even know how to finish on, that. How people schematically fit. Yeah. You know? uh, if you're up and around, you're out and about, you want to give us a shout. The number to call is area code two six seven six eight seven zero zero two six. That number again is area code two six seven six eight seven zero zero two six. Call in. We're in the last few moments of the program or the P program, as I like to call it. But yeah, uh, Brother Rich, um, I just want to let everybody know who's listening. All four people, including the people here in the pro- in the ho- in the studio here. Um, yeah, Brother Richard, whatever he's having for him to give me credit for anything on the on national TV, whatever he's having, make mine's a double. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, got you. I'm surprised he even remembered that I said anything about Jacoby Brissett and anything good. But I appreciate it. I do. I know it don't last but for five minutes, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, yeah, uh, Double J, you mentioned something about Kansas City. So we'll come to you on this one. With Mahomes suffering what looked to be an ankle injury, he got stepped on twice. Ah, that could nag him for the rest of the season. And it will nag him because this is football, right? A violent sport it is. Are the Chiefs still a lock to come out of the AFC this year? Or no? 
the call is yours. No, for the re same reason that you just pointed out. This thing, the high ankle sprain for a quarterback is is a bigger, almost as equally as a big deal as if he were a running back. You know, you can't plant to throw the ball, and that's your job. And you can't plant to run the ball, deeming you ineffective. And as we've seen over these last two weeks, he already is, is struggling mightily, and the results are unfortunately really exposing themselves with this team. So I, if this happens, it opens it back up to, unfortunately, for many, the same old song and dance of Mr. Bill Belichick, who I can't wait till we get to them. You know what? I saw a meme. I guess it was a meme or something going on on Facebook. Uh, Bill Belichick was sitting back sipping some tea or coffee or whatever it was, and they were saying Bill Belichick is that dude. He sent Jacoby Brissett to the Colts two years ago, knowing that two years later that he would get a Chiefs of L and the Patriots would be, be back on top of the AFC. Man, I mean, say what you want about Bill Belichick, man. But even I know it's not real or whatnot. It, I don't know. I don't know. No, that guy ain't no telling, man. The guy is, he is, he's a, he's a, uh, well, I don't know, genius, cheater, all of the above, I guess. But I just thought that was interesting. Um, Yeah, man. And you mentioned something else, too, Double J, about on that ankle. He can't step into his throws either. You know, that's a big deal for a quarterback as well, especially at the NFL level. You know, it's a, it's a um, you know, you st throwing off that back foot as opposed to stepping, you know, if you're right-handed, of course, or any left-handed, whatever, you step with this foot, you step with the, the left foot, of course, if you're a right-hander, and then the right foot if you're a left-hander or whatever. But that foot you step with first to step into the throw. If you're not able to do that comfortably, then you're throwing, making a lot of throws off your back foot. And you might get away with that once or twice, but you're not going to get away with that um, over a period of time. We'll have to see how that shakes out. I hate that he got hurt like that because that dude is, he is the truth. Mahomes is, I believe. He is the truth. But Kansas City is showing that they are um, vulnerable. Vulnerable. And I would say that the AFC is sort of kind of starting to become wide open. Leon, what say you? Uh, Kansas City is definitely vulnerable. I mean, the Mahomes injury is something definitely to keep an eye on because, I mean, by him being such a a gifted passer the way he is, he's he, he, he's too much at risk of, of something wild happening. For example, if that Got ankle, you. by him not being able to move the way he, he normally moves, he's more prone to getting put, allowing him to push back, and him not being able to get away in time and getting bolted up on that ankle or something like that. And he, as as they go, I mean, as he goes, they go. They so go, yeah. If he's not at 100%, you know, are, are they going to have the same kind of impact and same kind of urgency to keep to, to play well as if he would be healthy? So who knows? But I mean, that defense, that defense is nothing to, to, to be proud about. Proud of. I mean, they're they basically they're basically best defense is outscoring. That's what. I, yeah, I would agree. But with if that they get too. into a and if they get, it's kind of like them old NBA West teams back in the in the eighties. They'll put up a hundred. It's like they put up 150 to 140 point game. <laughs> yeah. Basically, our defense is to outscore you. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? You're going to get up by so much. Right. We're going to get up so much for you to you have to play catch up. Yeah. But if we in a close knit game and you we're not separating like that, then it becomes a problem. Yeah. Double J, what was that you said? So what that's was something going Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, Double J, what was I'm that like, you like, were I'm saying? Good. You were saying something smart again? No, I was. No, 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 I was. I was uh, doubling down on Leon's point that it was the uh, you know the o two o three Dallas Mavericks. Oh, you know, so I, I heard Dallas, and I, I heard Dallas. Right. I thought we were already done with that topic. Oh, I know you're a little sensitive. I know. No, I'm not. Sorry, <laughs> I eat nails for breakfast. You ain't know. Ask your local construction company, buddy. Brother Rich. Fingernails is what he means. He's so nervous. Oh, wow. Really? Now I'm young, young Kim. Right. No nail shop over here, baby. Uh, Brother Rich. Brother Rich. Brother Rich. Brother Rich. Sir? <laughs> uh, do you think that had the Chiefs had Tyreek Hill, 
that the outcome against the Colts would have been different. And Absolutely. with Tyreek Hill, with the Colts, I mean, excuse me, with the Chiefs still remain as the favorites in some circles over the Patriots to come out of the AFC. And I think that's where we, we have to look with them. They're not the same team as last year. That's another team that's not the same team as last year. They have an incredible, incredibly gifted young man as quarterback and a, 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 a head coach that is well-respected in the game. Nevertheless, they're not as tight a unit in terms of having that lockdown. So absolutely, were he on the field, it would definitely look a little bit different because the options would be more. And with, with having uh, Mahomes uh, uh, behind center, it's just, it, it just gives you so many different options. You put Tyreek Hill back there, he's, the game is wide open. Yes, absolutely would have made a difference. Mm. All right, fellas. This next one is everybody's favorite. You know me. I saved the best for last, right? The Browns got a lot of explaining to do. How else can this performance against the 49ers on Monday night football be best described or other described other than an embarrassment in that loss? Leon, I'll let you go first because then my other two co-hosts over there Believe me when I tell you, they probably got a whole year's worth of show notes waiting on this particular one on this particular day. So I'll let you go ahead and have your say. Mm. How to best describe that game? Yes. That was. From the Brown standpoint, that is. I've, I've, oh, wow. That, uh, I've seen, I I've know. seen horror movies that, that was, that was, that was, that was, Less, 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 less. Time. I got you. I mean, that was just terrible. <laughs> I got you. I mean, that was that was a butt kicking. Man. I mean, you got out, out work and out, just out, out everything. Out coach, out scheme, mm-hmm. out thought, out whatever. Like whatever, you, whatever you thought you was prepared for, you wasn't at all. <laughs> exactly. At all. Exactly. And it. it, it and it was just it, it, that it, that was an embarrassing part. Forget, like I said in my post yesterday, forget the X's of those. You just got out work and out and this manhandled. Mm-hmm. Like that goes to your heart, your effort. Oh, like everything. You weren't prepared, and you just just didn't didn't have it, nothing to bring. Yeah, chest. So, and you did it on national TV, nonetheless. Chest cavity. That just came down to, to, to it wasn't that chest cavity. So so many words. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, what's in your heart? You, mm-hmm. There was nothing there, mm-hmm. and it's so funny because San Fran used the motto that the Browns used last week to beat Baltimore. Oh, really? Would you point they that out for us, please? From, please point that out for us. Do tell from the same point of we're go, we gonna hit you right. We're gonna hit you right in the mouth. We're gonna line up. We're gonna we're gonna force you to, to play our game. We're gonna dictate the tempo on how we on how things will move. Because mm-hmm. we know once we get up on you, you ain't gonna come back. Because mm. we're gonna take your will from you, and that's basically was they was a the high of the high last week, and they got the low of the low because mm. they mm. all know they smoke their own musk, read the press clippings, mm. listen to their little girlfriends or whatever. They mm. they did a little entourage and thought they were the best thing since sliced bread. And San Fran was like, okay, all right, mm. you gonna show you who's tougher, and they showed you on national TV. Mm-hmm. So and, and that was just the sad part. In grand fashion, uh, good stuff, Leon. I appreciate that. Double J. I will let you go next on the Browns. I'm sure you do. Yeah, I do. I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the truth is what I do, as we all should. Double J, I'll let you go next, Brother Rich. <laughs> I'll save you for the last. I know you're over there shadow boxing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Getting ready for the big Mike Tyson throw down. But, you know, hold on, killer. Hold on. Slow down. Let's, let's, let us finish getting together your outro, the music you're going to come out to. To get in the ring, and then we once we let know what that is, we'll let you come on out. Double J, go ahead, have your say. And if you say anything against Matt Stafford, well, I'm coming through this phone. Rich, don't don't let him don't let him bother you because we all know that when <laughs> lost, he looked like Cuba Gooding Jr. and Boys in the Hood Back. after Ricky died. Wow, so, really? <laughs> talking about shadow boxing. Really? Okay, go ahead. You only got two more minutes left, <laughs> so. And then before we go to a commercial, one that I don't even have, but we'll go to it anyway. Yeah, go ahead, Double J. Now you got a minute and a half. Right. So here's the thing. We know at least 
that the special teams in Cleveland is solid. The defense was finally humbled. Uh, and ultimately here, I'm not, again, I'm not hitting the panic button because it, it is back to the drawing board offensively, which is fine because you're talking about a team that just came off of a bye week in the 49ers. You're looking at two products of Bill Belichick that remain undefeated. I'm not getting, I'm not going to take too much away from this. Again, I expect it. If you listen, rewind to last week, I said I anticipated them to lose the majority of these next three games, one of which, again, being what we're discussing right now, following that is when it's really going to count. And they very well, I anticipate them and expect them to win seven, if not all nine, going into the end of the season. And I just want to see where our esteemed host is then when those weeks come. Guess what? See, don't, don't, mm. hold on, hold on. <clears throat> don't try to blend the lines of wins and losses with the way you looked in them wins and losses. I know that this team and I go, I said that from, from very good. If you want me to pull the tape up, that's what I think what I'm going to do for next week's show. I'm going to do a replay of the show that we talked about in AFC North so the people out there can really hear who's rooting for whom or which team I should say. That's number one. Number two. Number two. Nobody said nothing about the Browns was going to the Super Bowl. Not I, anyway. But I digress. I understand that there's going to be some ups and some downs and all of that. That goes without saying. And to say that is sort of kind of lightweight, like mentioning, or should I say, overstating the obvious. We're talking about the fashion in which you win or you lose. For any team, the Browns are not devoid or exempt from critique just because they are a fan favorite. My history and lineage goes far back to the Browns. I learned sports from the Browns and my grandfather, of course. It runs deep with me. But you know me, man. I'm not going to say it is when it ain't just because we friends. Y'all know better than that. That's not why we do this show here. But I get your point, though, Double J. I appreciate you making that point. But the fashion in which they lost is separate from how many more they're going to win or how many more they're going to lose. Right? Okay. Got you. Are you done or would you like to continue? Because if it was of anybody else's team that was the favorite or whatnot, it would be, oh, he's trash. Oh, he's a bum. Or they, 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 they. But I get it. Different strokes for different folks that happen to be the host. I get it. I get it. And guess what? I was ready for y'all today, you and Brother Rich in particular, because guess what? It's the first time since January of last year I had my shoes on the right feet. <laughs> Boy, y'all know who you're messing with. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, look, if your offense can't establish any rhythm. Oh, because, really? You know, you, again, we've talked about mm-hmm. the old line all season. Yeah. that That's going to be one of the biggest question marks. I'm intrigued to see what happens. Hold it. Hold that thought. Uh, when hold. Kareem Hunt returns, that helps at all. I am, too. I was getting ready to go there. Hold that thought, though. You mentioned offensive line. Did not somebody on this program at some point before snow started to melt say something about mm, if you got a franchise type caliber quarterback, you need to put a what kind of fence in front of him? I digress. But yeah, you mentioned something about uh, what's his name again? Mm, Kareem Hunt. Continue. Correct. So again, you have no rhythm. Uh, we know what type of evening that Nick Bosa had. Uh, oh yeah, and he planted the flag. When you when you give up, disrespectful. Two hundred yards rushing, your defense is going to be backpedaling. So it opened up the path for them. Um, again, there's not a whole lot that could be said. At least special teams wise, they proved to be solid and consistent. Uh, but I'm not I'm not putting too much stock into this particular game. Like you said, it's a long season, and I think it's more than favorable. Mm. Uh, following these next two weeks. Okay. Well, good stuff, Double J. We appreciate that. You know what I mean? Just call me Dexter. I have a pocket protector. Uh, Brother Rich, on to you now. I know you've been waiting on this. Um, I just do want to. I just want to ask you a question before you go on your Stephen A. soliloquy. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, mm. Who was the wide right receiver? Was it Higgins, Callaway? That the pet that was. And the pass would have been a touchdown, but he kind of he tried to basket okay. catch it. Explain to me. <clears throat> explain to me. You 
at whatever it is that you do Explain for a living. What you, it, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You at whatever it is you do for a living, because I'm trying to get my make sure I get my thoughts out correctly. Whatever it is you do for a living, there has to be some element to it that no matter what you do, every day you go in to do it, it has to be done a certain way, right? The fundamentals is what we call it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I yes, wish sir. not just you, but I'll ask Double J and Leon. Maybe I'm wrong. And this ain't no knock against the Browns. This is just trying to – I'm. A, it's a head-scratching moment. Explain to me why in that situation, because Baker put the ball where it was supposed to be, down and away, with enough space in between the ground and where that guy's hands were, that he should have put his thumbs together to catch that ball. Why are wide receivers all, and I've seen it time and time again, trying to make a basket catch in a situation where it would require you put them fingertips, them thumbs, the points together? Could you explain that to me first, Brother Rich? Why did he try to make that kind of catch in that situation right at the goal line? Well, well, if you're asking me why today's athletes are not as fundamentally sound, uh, I, I couldn't be the one to answer that. Okay, I'll um, let Double J answer I think that his goes next round. Gotcha. Individual responsibility, coaching, and some things like that. So I'll okay. leave that to them. Okay. So I, I'll wait till you come to me to defend what I saw on Sunday, which doesn't alarm me. Where you have the floor. But maybe I, you know. You have the floor. Well, but but understand the floor, that the, I'll, the, the wood I'll, underneath I'll it is rickety. But you have the floor. Sir? I said, you have the floor, but understand. Well, well I'll say it like this. I'll, okay. I'll say it like this, sir. I'll say it like this. What I saw, and I, I paid attention to the game, the tenor of the game, and what I saw was a team that is likened unto the freshman that has gone to high school. This, but he comes from junior high as the star that everybody's talking about. Yeah, this guy coming next year. Everybody's talking about him. He didn't ask to be talked about. It's just that he's done so well thus far. He's a phenom, and people can't wait till he gets there. And every bully on the senior block can't wait to beat him up at lunchtime just to prove that he's not as tough as he thinks he is. And that's what's happening to this team right now. That's what's happening to Baker. That's what's happening to them and the Browns. And the, the tenor of every game is the same. The attitude, these teams are coming in like they're playing in the Super Bowl. Nick Bosa, they said that Nick Bosa was chasing. This is what Twitter was saying. So it's all over Twitter. Anyone can look, go look it up. So this is in the public domain. I'm going to say it on the program. <laughs> they were saying that Nick Bosa was chasing Baker Mayfield like he was a black man and, and Bosa was a police. This is how oh, wow. Nick Bosa was, it was personal with him going after oh, wow. Mayfield. And he said it. And, and, and the teams are saying it. We, yeah, we couldn't wait to knock that chip off their shoulder. And this is all the, the doing of ESPN. Yes, the players have absolutely played into it. And this is why I, as a member of the fan club, I, as a card-carrying member of the dog pound, I'm glad to see that happen. Because what I understand mm. is that will settle the talent and this team will begin to show their mettle. And I do believe that Baker is cocky enough to take a licking and keep on ticking. And he needed this introduction to the NFL to settle in, and he has to grow and mature, and they have to grow and mature to understand you got to come out here every Sunday prepared to do this. And here's the, here's the knock on this team if there is one. It is that there is no seasoned professional among the coaching ranks to take them through this. There is nobody mm -hmm. on the team. Certainly Odell Beckham Jr. is not that individual as a professional. He's not experienced enough. He's into the, 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 the social media, the, the, his branding, just as anybody else. So he's not, there's not anyone on the team seasoned enough to talk them through this so they are learning as a team. So as long as they learn as a team and remain a team, I think they'll be wonderful. Just like, So now I'll finish up by what Double J brought up. Based on a scheduling, they will be wonderful by the end of the season. I absolutely have no doubt about that. None. You know what? I cannot argue with nothing that you said. I'm salty uh, right now. Wow. The man told the truth. Yeah, he, he told the truth. He told the truth. I can't. Yeah, he nailed it. I, yeah, he nailed it. You nailed it, bro, Rich. I can't. You know what I'm saying? That's why you're a part of the program. 
But you, I'm telling you right now, though, even though you don't celebrate Christmas, you're getting a lump of coal just because. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You know me. I just still got to send out gifts. But, yeah, uh, can't argue. I'll receive it gladly coming from you. <laughs> it was coming through the front window like a brick with a message on it. Save it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I can't. I, I, I couldn't even. I, I can't argue. Darn it. I thought I had some. Oh, I just knew you was going to say something I could feed off of. Uh, I can't argue with it, though. Double J, I know you're happy. You over there like, yeah. Two clicks and a woo-woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, Ossifer, Ossifer. Arrest that man. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm with you on that, bro, Rich. I'm with you on that all day, every day, actually. Again, I can't argue. I'm, I'm trying. You see, I'm trying to buy myself a little bit of time here to try to find some. Now, what's the Cowboys excuse? What's the Cowboys excuse? Uh, hold it. What's the Cowboys? Oh, uh, see, okay, okay. okay. So you, okay. so you going Oh no, hold it, hold it, hold it. So what you gonna do? I, I hear. I that's yeah. So you poking the bear? That's what you doing. You poking the bear? And I ain't talking about the Chicago bear. You poking the bear? That what you are doing here? You don't want to poke the bear, man. I told you already. I'm well, working. I mean, you set up the show to to, to lambaste the brown. No, I did not. You set up the show to I did. close out on last. Yes, you did, sir. The, you hold on, we're not done. To mock the brown. No, I did not. The browns. You already defended everything in Texas. You defended Texas women, Texas steaks, Texas cowboys. <laughs> we didn't Texas say nothing. We Texas, didn't say. You, oh gosh, the you lies, the lies. Of Texas, you defended. Oh my the, gosh. You got the I thought you had a Texas driver's license. Your, your whole family was in Texas. <laughs> Woo. So we just He's because taking more steps back, brother Rich than James Harden. Oh, Thank hey you. yo to the and I say hey yo H A Y O to the no double J. Oh, okay, so you really that's how we doing this, right? That's how we this is a WWE moment. That's what this is. Okay, I'm gonna start. So we know getting ready your your preseason NBA pick. Say the Lakers here, and I will mute you. <laughs> Say the Lakers. The Houston Rockets. Oh, I'm about Something to mute your Texas. ass. I'm about to mute. <laughs> oh, that's so disrespectful. and respectful. Wow, y'all on the road today. Here it is. I give you credit for coming with it and still. You just still. You just, okay. All right, Ralphie. Keep on here and you put your eye out. Um, and we're not done. We have one more team to get to before we get out of here for the day. But it's been some good stuff. Again, you know, right here on national TV or the national program, uh, I had to admit uh, begrudgingly that Brother Rich hit on all cylinders. Finally, I, I was amazed at, and when he got to the end of it, I was like, "Wow, I'm at a loss for words." And we all know, if you know me, that's not really something easy to do. But anyway, I give it up to Brother Rich and Double J for holding steady <clears throat> to their selection, and we shall see. We shall see how things turn out. Speaking of the Niners, though. Going into that Monday night game, it was said that they hadn't played nobody. And after the game against the Browns, I saw a couple of folks on my timeline say they still ain't played nobody. Leon, what you say to that? I mean, technically it's true. I mean, oh, when you okay. don't even play who on your schedule. I mean, you can't. Win the other t- other team's games for them. I mean, yeah, but they saying so the level. You only can play who's in front of you. So, but they saying the competition. But with, that, they, with the Browns, but as far as with the Browns, I mean, and them beating the Browns. I mean, the Browns still trying to figure out who they are. So, there's, there's not really been a team like the Patriots or like a team who know their identity and know who they are and know what they where they're moving. Mm. They're the San Francisco. They have a model. They're trying to get there, and I like the form trauma they have and what they're doing and the system they're running. But, I mean, it's still a waiting thing with them because I'm not sold on Jimmy G either because what if they get in the game to where they get down and, and they got that running game gets null and void and they got to throw the ball 30, 40 times. That's a good point. That's a good point. That is a I very good point. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Double J, what did you say, man, about them Niners? They for real? Well, or for fake? Is they're, they're in a very a good division to prove how good they actually are. Again, they're going up next week. Here's your first real test 
I was hoping they were going to see Seattle first, but they're going to they're going to see the Rams on the road. But again, now is that really a test though? When you're going up against the team, is that really a test though? Well, I mean, the Rams is, got all the again, names, but their defense the is terrible. Well, again, they gave up 100 yards last game, as we talked about, to Seattle. Yeah. Let's see if the team that just rushed 200 can do it again or at least eclipse 100 because they have a three-headed monster back there. Yeah, know, they do. Give credit to, to Raheem Mostert. Yeah. And so that's opening up the passing lanes here because, again, when you're talking about your number one threat offensively is George Kittle, a tight end and not necessarily your receiver, then, uh, you know, from there, you would think, you would assume that that's actually a bad team. So I'm, in, I'm going to be very intrigued to see if Aaron Donald and co. get pressure on him, on Jimmy G, and, and how they react. You know, uh, this will be a very telling game as far as my prediction that Seattle very well could come away with the division, but this would be able to to tell you coming into next week's show if if uh, San Francisco is the real deal. Yeah, I'm going to wait on that Seattle matchup to really say anything further. But going back to the Browns right quick, um, and I don't know how long ago it was I mentioned this. In all honesty, Baker can't keep running for his life, man. And you know I got to mention too because I've been highly I've been high on his his radar. No, nah, I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but John Dorsey, I've been I speaking I've been speaking highly of him. Did that's that better? Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know he got some questions to answer too, man. You know because right now it's looking like you know with um and I you know and as much as I am a Kane fan, Olivier Vernon Vernon he ain't getting it done. The idea was to put somebody on the other side of Miles Garrett so that it would be both like a Chubb and a, and a Von Miller, so to speak. Not literally, but, you know, they had that kind of mm-hmm. impact. And then nobody on the other side of that Browns defense on what? that other end showed up, man. I mean, let's just be real now. You get what I'm trying to tell you? So I'm I'm a big fan of John Dorsey still. You right. know, he, he got a good track record. But, you know, a couple questions got to be asked, man, because, you know, should you have gone after, after Trent Williams? You know what I mean? As opposed to making whatever trade it was he did. Because who, did, who, did, who was the offensive lineman that he got rid of in order to bring Vernon in? It was a high, big name. You, who was it? Was, it? it was Zeitler. Oh, was it Ze- Zeitler? It was, yeah, I think it was Zeitler, wasn't it? I don't know. Who, who was it, Double J? Do you remember? I don't know. I, do you remember? Double J? Mm-hmm. It was, it, he was right. Leon was right. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, come on, man. You know, it's 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 still. Um, I, I just I still say, folks need to be really look, <clears throat> taking a look in the mirror. But brother Rich, we come to you last before we get out of here. Well, uh, somebody was gonna say something. Okay. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask. Do you think they should try bringing in a guy like Khalil or Matt Khalil? I don't see why not. I don't know what his. I know Matt. You know, he he kind of long in the tooth. I suppose Carolina. Um, but that, but, but, but brother, I think it was either brother Richard or you both, and might even Leon too. We mentioned about veteran presence and a few other stuff we discussed today. And that, they need that. They Browns do right. need that. They really, they need that veteran presence. <laughs> Hell, I would have brought back, excuse my French fries. I would have brought back Phil Dawson just because, but it ain't the kicking game. That was the issue, right? Going into the season, everybody thought the kicking game was going to be the issue. But anyway, uh, brother Rich, before we get out of here, um, Richard Sherman and I, I, you and I, had a kind of like a little discussion about this before we got on the show today. It was said that Baker was acting a little haughty, if you would, in the captain's handshake, you know, prior to the game, you know, before the game starts or whatever. They, you know, the captains for the other team, they come and they shake hands or whatever. Richard Sherman put it out there that Baker didn't do that. And now my reaction to that, and I stand corrected, but my reaction to that was like, oh, man, come on, man, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. That ain't, that's not good. Then it turns out, and I don't know how true this is because I have not actually seen footage, but apparently it's something out there showing the footage that Baker actually did dap everybody up at the thing. So what was Richard Sherman's angle in yeah, your mind? Did. Yeah, well, so what was Richard Sherman's angle in your mind, Brother Rich, to just put the target on their back some more? Well, what, 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 again, Cause, this is, speaks right into the point that we raised a minute ago. Hold on, hold that, that thought. Hold that, hold that, hold, on, hold, hold that thought, hold that thought. And I, I'm bringing this up in particular because, all jokes aside, don't lie on me. 
I don't like that. I don't like that. If 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 you're gonna tell me something that's for real, then tell me something that's for real. But you're gonna make up something, man, just to paint a picture. I I think you I think you file for that. You real lightweight. You lightweight file for that, man. Sure. You lightweight file for that because you know it's people gunning for this dude. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, gun. I, right. Let me let me say it this way. If you as a competitor, if you're gunning for me because of what I bring to the table, that's all within the lines as far as I'm concerned. But if you're gunning for me because of something somebody said or you're trying to make up some stuff or whatever the case may be, now you borderline. That could get somebody hurt. You get what I'm trying to tell you? If that make any sense. But go ahead, Brother Rich. Finish your, right. finish your thought. Yeah, I, ain't, I don't appreciate that. I, I, I will, I'll, I'll close out with another example of the Browns. Another way to look at the Browns for the women who are listening and the men who can relate to this. The Browns are like a pretty woman, a very beautiful young girl in school. She's in high school, and girls, other girls attack her and say vile, repugnant things about her, make up salacious, and boys who can't get her say things about her simply because. And this is that in a circumstance. Okay. Like Here this young man okay. is making up something about this young man because people already don't like the Browns because, as I, as I said earlier, they have a target painted on them by the national media because they were solicited to be favored as the darlings of the NFL going in, that the stories were already written, being written about them and the prolific uh, uh, ideas and storylines that so, were going to be put out for them. So hold that and thought. people resented them for yes. that. And so now, yes, hold, but hold that thought, Brother Rich. Hold that thought. Here's what I'm asking you, Joe, seriously, as a competitor. Regardless of the level, mm. if you know that the word is out about you and you know when you go up to Rucker Park, because you know how it is at that Rucker, and I keep mentioning the Rucker because it truly is the mecca of, of basketball as far as I'm concerned. When you know you go up to the Rucker and you know they're gunning for you, you already know what you got to bring, right? You already know, you, got to, you, already know what you got to bring it. But is it? But here's the, here's the thing that happens, though. Here's the thing that happens, that you are, are we are unable to... This is unavoidable in the circumstance that we're talking about. You're talking about professional football. You're talking about a sport where teams can legally plot to invade your personal, private space to the point where they can do you physical harm. And it can be based on any numbers of factors that... that so things like this are used as a motivation. Are we going to kick this so-and-so and so-and-so? We're going to do so-and-so, and they come in here. And so, and now you are Richard Sherman, who is a prolific uh, defensive stalwart. And what you do, you you good at what you do. Bosa is good at what you do. And they make it in their mind, oh, who these people think they are? We coming for them. Now, you can have all the plans that you want. All oh, the Browns are coming in. We're going to do this. We're going to run this. We're going to do so-and-so. We're going to run this play. And this team now, because remember now, we're not just talking about any franchise. We're talking about the San Francisco 49ers. This is a team of pedigree. This is a, this is a team of legacy. They're coming up with a, with a chip on their shoulder naturally because of the fans they play in front of, the environment they're in, and what they're here to represent. So they're not going to be punked by no team from Cleveland. So there's a bunch of personal elements to this game that is not like a regular game. So how do you plan for that kind of aggression every Sunday? So some Sundays you meet it, like they met it with the Raiders, and they met it with the Rams, and they, you meet it some. But some Sundays you might think we're ready, but you meet somebody that's prepared more. than. And now we didn't know the degree to which both had a chip on his shoulder towards this young man personally, where, again, he was running after, I'm telling you, I saw it. I didn't know this was his motivation, but you could watch the game and footage and see this was personal for him. Whatever was driving him, it was absolutely, he had a vendetta against this team. And so after yeah. the game, he said it out loud, yes, we were out to get them. And, and Richard Sherman is now making up things to what? To do what? To give other incentives for not only them again, but for other teams to go after them because they see him as a cocky young player that hasn't won anything yet, that doesn't deserve all this media. And then unfortunately, 
Baker is young enough and immature enough to buy into some of this stuff, and they're young enough and immature enough to buy into some of it. Yeah, so, good. Yeah, that exactly. was good stuff. We had our B, our B. If you're listening, I know you're probably out there listening. You called in for whatever reason, man. I couldn't patch you in. That's my bad. Um, I couldn't. I don't even know what to say to all of that. You know, uh, the show must go on. I suppose. You know, it's always some technical difficulties. I was, you know, as far as this thing goes. But yeah, um. I'm with you on that, bro, Rich. You know what I mean? That was that was well said. That was well said. You know, going forward, man. You know, I, I just want I want these guys, man. If if you know, for me, man, sports just boils the t- in the nutshell. Is is what our our parents told us. You know, we grew up at a time when they sent us out the house. They said, "Look, I can't be with you everywhere you go and all the times you go." But when you're out there, you know, you get into some situations. You know, guy hit you. You hit him. He hit you once. You hit him back twice. And make sure the second one is harder. You get what I'm trying to tell you? So, you know, so far this season, man, just a couple of performances, man. I just was, just, I don't know, as a competitor, man, I was very disappointed. Let me just put it like that, you know. So from here on out, I don't care who on the schedule. You know, don't you can't come to me and tell me, oh, like we said it before a million times. I can't stop saying it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you, you, y'all you coming for us because what they saying? Guess what? Bring it. Bring it. Now, if I don't win it, so be it. But you ain't going to want to play no more. Bet you that. You see what I'm saying? But you're not the embarrassment, man. I just I can't do that. I just I don't, I don't ever recall. Man, you know, my memory escapes me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's somebody out there I played against who might want to call in on the show, you know, and say, oh, Jay, you remember that time? And if, I, if, if it's the truth, it's the truth. We got a caller right here on the line right quick. Let's see who we got here. Hold on. What it do, what it do. You're talking and they're calling into the shop report. Who are you? Dr. Wilkinson. Is this Dr. Wilkinson? Yeah, what's going on, player? What's going yeah, on? Me. Yeah, what's going on, man? You're calling to the what's shizzle. Going on? Yeah, I got Brother Rich, Double J, and I got my yeah. one of my coworkers, Leon, on the line on the on the, on the in the program or in the show today. What you got for us, man? Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Nothing much, man. Just calling. I was on break trying to catch off of y'all. Ended the show, man. Yeah, yeah. It's all good, man. We appreciate you for calling, man. We just, right here, we just in the last um, the last portion or uh, of the show, man. We were just discussing, going through some of the most notable team performances from week five, man. And we were talking about the Browns, of course, and the 49ers. I'll say them last but not least. Just kind of asking, what, what's, what's really uh, going on with the Browns and all the 49ers for real, the, basically? The, the, the 49ers, all I'm going to say about them is let's not jump on the bandwagon so quick. I know they're 4-0, but who have they had to play their first four games that was, like, really worth a mention? You know what I mean? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, somebody did say that. Somebody yeah, I mean, uh, go ahead. I mean, they need to be 4-0 because they ain't really play no no teams. I mean, I thought the Browns might have been their toughest matchup, but you can see Baker Mayfield can't get it together. So the Browns won't be a threat until they can actually get that quarterback to quarterbacking and play calling together you gotcha. know what i mean yeah. but they're trying to involve odell beckham jr but it's like baker mayfield plays the best when he can just go to anybody on the field baker's so focused on odell beckham he's not thinking about the rest of the offense it's you like know he what get nowhere if he's stuck on one player that is a darn good question i'm so glad you said that because some conversations i've been having with people at the job man i kind of brought that up i said man i like beck OBJ and what the idea on paper anyway him getting here that you would think that would that's like yeah and I'm saying figuratively only people figuratively only because you know folks love to you, they we live in a day and age you say something about one guy versus the other and they think you're trying to compare no but sort of kind of like when Moss got with yeah, Brady yeah. you know what I mean you would think that that upgrade and whatever it was just going it was going to be through the roof but I'm starting to look at it and like man yeah that's what I thought yeah was is, was he really good for this team because. You look at what they did, the Browns did the last seven games, and it looked that way to me somewhat, man. Like they trying to force they trying to force it to Beckham so much so that you sacrificing all the other stuff that got you to the in the position the that you're in. Right. You yeah. got a great running back in Nick Tubb who yeah. can also catch the ball out of the backfield. Yeah. Uh, throwing it to Odell and double and triple coverage. How about we go ahead and give Nick Chubb some reps? You know what I mean? He's yes. a great running back. And he's doing everything he can until Kareem Hunt comes back. So it's like you can't just stay focused on Odell, Odell, Odell. Yeah. Forgetting about Jarvis Landry. And like I said, you got a Nick Chubb who's a great running back but who can also catch the ball out the backfield. You can't forget about all these other dynamic players that you got on your team because you're so focused on the diva superstar in Odell Beckham Jr. It's like he's going to have a meltdown eventually. But 
as of right now, you can't just be so, oh, oh we got to get Odell the ball that you're scared of his meltdown. This is what Odell does. You know what I mean? If mm-hmm. he has his meltdown, so what? He can't do it all by himself. And I'm not going to put my team's record on the line because I'm trying to get you the ball and it's not working, you know? Yeah. And you know what's interesting? And, Brother Rich, you and you know you and I, when, we've, when I first started doing a podcast, before we, when I was bare bones way back in the day, I used to always ask, when we talk about the Browns, no matter who's here, and, Leon, you probably know this, too. We can all agree on this, actually. It befuddled me since 1999. Don't matter who was on that sideline, whatever running back, and I'm not saying they all were probably capable of, I just didn't see it. Why don't we use our running backs yeah. in the passing game more? And and I'm not saying it have to be like Andy Reid does it, but did you see a couple of the screen plays that the, the Chiefs got in the playbook? Right. Man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Man, them them type of them type of screen passes. But but again, but again, but but again, Jay, again, here we go now. We're talking about a first year head coach, Baker's first sure. real full season running the team, trying to fit That's in true. a diva superstar, um, trying to make sure Landry is stays happy in this offense. But they're not giving Landry the rest he needs. Yeah, see, that's what that's fact, what I'm saying. Brother fact. Rich, I'm, I'm with you. All, all true, all true. I'm with you on that. But guess what, though? I'm, I'm going all the way back to the playground. It didn't take me forever in a day. If I saw Magic do a move, and I ain't saying I'm no Magic or no Jordan or no nothing like that. I'm talking about a fundamental type move. One yeah. step, pull up, drop, jump shot. I would practice that over and over and over and over again. It don't take the Browns. Everything you said was true. Everything Dr. Wilkinson said is true. I'm just adding into the gumbo. It don't take the Browns coaching staff forever in the day for all those things to be true for y'all to look at one of Andy Reid's, just look at one of his games and say, okay, you know what? We're going to start working on that type of screen pass right here today. I was going to say, look how effective the screen can be. That's what I'm trying to tell you with Nick Chubb. Man, come on, man! It, it's not hard. Ah, yeah, well, Nick, but 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 the, the thing ah, about the Browns executed. is they don't they they are not a good blocking line either. Like they they can okay, that's fair. They can run block all day, but when it comes to pass, that's blocking, fair. That's why I said it's, it's like it's hit or miss. That's it's exactly hit or miss. right. Okay, that's fair. Right. That's you fair. Have, to have the personnel to execute that, and so do you want to put see again now? But wait a minute! 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 Playbook. Wait a minute! Wait a minute now! Wait a minute! We've seen the Browns throw some screens in the last game against the Ravens. So they got them. But they executed it right. The okay. Blockers picked up who they were supposed to pick up. True that. And, and the running back ran through the hole he's supposed to run through. Like, everything was perfect. But it's like, now nah, they're they rushing everything because you got people that's coming off that end that know it's a screen. So it's like when people know it's a screen, if it's that obvious, you got to learn to call an audible, dog, because it's like you're a quarterback. You're supposed to be able to see. That's true, When they too. got that extra man lined up, when they go that zero read and they bring that extra uh, man off the end. That's you're true, too. You're supposed to be able to see that. Don't call the same play. I forgot which play it was, but uh, Bosa got to uh, Baker Mayfield. He ended up getting intentional grounding call. It's like if you see they got the extra man coming off the end, yeah. call the audible. Yeah. As soon as you see him coming, throw it away as soon as you can. You're not that fast. You're not that mobile. You're not going to get around on your feet. And if you can, do it. Don't be so scared. He was out there tipping. It's like, dog, don't tip. If you see the rush is coming, get out of there. Don't be looking downfield to make the pass that you ain't yeah. going to make. You're going to throw an interception that's going to be incomplete. So I'd rather get the yards on my feet or throw it away. Yeah. Than, like I, I said, get hit intentional grounding because I want to throw it at the last minute. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I think his instincts are somewhat handcuffed to a degree. But I'll say this as well. You all are right. I, we mentioned the offensive line and the, not being what it should be and a couple of folks not being there that maybe should be there and the whole nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, I'm looking at it like this. You ain't got the time that you think you got trying to force the ball downfield to Odell Beckham either. So if I ain't got the time, at least I'm going to throw a no, screen. No, you don't. I'm going to throw a screen. Because, see, I'm saying this. It's almost like in, in somewhat like when Deshaun Kaiser was here with Isaiah Crowell. Hear me out. Hugh Jackson had Deshaun Kaiser throwing the ball 40 times a game to 9, 8, yeah. 10 rushing attempts for Crowell, who was in a contract year. What I'm saying is the logic behind whatever it is that you're trying to do, your approach doesn't make sense to me. Now, you might not have the personnel. Fine. Mm-hmm. You might not have the execution. Fine. But at least attempt it. You're too top-heavy in what it is you're trying to do and forcing it downfield. 
That's all I'm saying. But that's the thing. You can't force it. You can't force it because then it leads to petty Thank you. And you got the offensive line holding, and that leads to Thank petty you. penalties. It's like, dog, you can't rush nothing because now you got people holding when they're not supposed to hold. You got players not running the right route. It's like, stop rushing. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Realize the situation you're in and overcome it. Oh, and you know what? Right quick, but I want to mention. That's not what the Browns doing. I, I want to mention. Um, and I meant to mention this earlier when we were talking about the Browns. This is my bad, but I'll get it in here right quick. My man Herm Arvey, you all know, used to play with the Browns and the Ravens, made the move, Eddie Robinson at Grambling. So I have to mention that because, you know, he his, his, word, his words carry weight with me. They do. I, I forget because I'm looking at his response. I, I think I asked him, well, like, man, what's really going on with the Browns, man? I mean, do we ever really get to see them? Is it Should we abandon all hope of really seeing them, you know, being good in our lifetime? And he responded, what up, dog? In my opinion, it's believing paying for a championship is the answer. Background, background. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, some things can't be avoided. Yeah, that's yeah. my fault. That's my fault. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, he said, in my opinion, it's believing – Paying for a championship is the answer. We've seen this movie before, unfortunately. Not saying this is the Browns yeah. when they drafted number one overall multiple years in a row. However, everyone needs to pump the brakes and take it one game at a time. I can't argue that because Brother Rich and Double J have been saying it so much as so much as they've been saying that as much. Especially Baker. Stop with all the BS commercials and focus on your craft. He said, I'm just saying. So that's coming from my man Herm, who played yes, with sir. Jonathan Ogden, who played with Priest Holmes. I think it was Priest Holmes with Baltimore. Played with Ray Lewis and all. He, he was with them dudes, man. Played under Belichick and all of that. So I'm, And I only say that because not that I'm popping my collar like I'm all that or nothing. I only mention that to say, you know, there's a lot of people out there who lend credence to former players and what they're saying. They be on TV all the time, you know, the Damian Woodies and the and the right. uh, you know all of them you know folks get them you know the Jeff Saturdays you know in the field Samses and all they give him a lot of credit. Well, Herm might not be on TV, but he played w- under the legendary Bill Belichick, and he was with the Browns. Yeah. And from when when Belichick got here in '91 all the way to '94, uh, mind you, when if you look at that coaching staff, if you've seen the documentary Believe Land, uh, that coaching staff and all them guys in that building went on to do great things after the fact. See what I'm saying? And Herm was there. You know what I mean? Who who, by the way, he will he will be the first one to tell you he had a front row seat to when the Browns played the Lions, and Barry Sanders did his one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, to my man yeah. RB that was out there listening, uh, but tried to call in. I don't know RB what happened for whatever reason. I couldn't patch you in, but you know what I'm saying. Maybe we'll try it again next week, fellas. I want to appreciate. I, well, I want to appreciate. I appreciate. I, let me slow it down. I appreciate everybody's input on this one. My man, Doctor Wilkinson. Giving us a shout out. Yeah, man. Just call him when I can, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate you calling, man. Just please call, yep. continue to call because your opinion is, is needed here. I see. I, see, I will, brother. I'm always being double team, man. Uh, to my host. I uh, got your back, dog. As soon as Joey sent me that text message, man, when I go on break or when I get off work, you know I'm going to call, man. Yes, please do, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but again, to Dr. Wilkinson. All right, no problem, man. I'm about to get back out here on this slow, man. I appreciate you for having me. Oh, man, all day, every day, man. Be safe out there. And, of course, none other than my host. Yeah, I'll call in at the next show. All right, sound good, man. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> all right, have a good one, y'all. Yeah, you too. Uh, have a good one, man. Um. To my co-host on the other side here over here, brother, brother Rich, and, you know, of course, Double J, and to my special guest today, my cat Leon from the Jizzob Sports Colleague. Good stuff, fellas. I appreciate it. And on that note, it's been fun, but we got to run. We appreciate y'all for listening. Don't forget to check us out right here on the Spreaker.com network. You go to the search box, you type in the shop report, or you can check us out on our Facebook fan page, Twitter, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'm still having an issue with the Google Podcasts. I don't know why. We're trying to get that thing corrected. Bear with us. We're on Spotify. And if you like or appreciate it, if you can give us a follow or subscribe to our YouTube channel or our Facebook fan page. And, of course, you can always send us an email, the shop Report 365 at gmail.com. <laughs> and if that don't work, you can Google it. Y'all hear what I said? For my mans, be rich a.k.a. Ohio State's number one booster, my man Double J, a.k.a. Ohio State's athletic director, and my man Leon, sports colleague, and all those who support us, 
we say thank you. I'm Barbershop Jay, and you've been listening to the Shop Report. And remember, the next time y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop. Walk-ins are always welcome. Holla! Oh, <laughs>